Is he in? Yes! Oh, oh my goodness! Good the infamous fifth down fiasco. The CU Buffaloes were unknowingly granted an extra down on their final drive of the day. And on that fifth down, quarterback Charles Johnson scored, and CU beat Missouri 33-31. It was the most bizarre story of the 1990 college football season, and it only became more bizarre. Shortly after the game, CU head coach Bill McCartney focused his attention not on the fifth down controversy, but on the field itself, calling Missouri's artificial turf, quote, an embarrassment to college football. Now, the thing that upsets me is that field is not playable college football. Nobody should have to come in here and play on that surface. I'd rather play in a parking lot than that thing. Well, that just infuriated Missouri even more. Debate raged for months. The game officials were each suspended one game, and the tainted win helped CU eventually capture the Big 8 title, earn a trip to the Orange Bowl, and win a national championship. One year later, much has been said about CU's tainted victory and how it affected the very foundation of the 1990 season. And now, it's Colorado and Missouri once again, this time on the Buffs' home turf. We've uh, felt the uh, wrath of this thing for almost a year. And to uh, say that it's, it's not a factor in this year's game is nonsense. <laughs> Sports presents CU Buffaloes football. Live from Folsom Field in Boulder, it's the University of Missouri Tigers versus the University of Colorado Buffaloes. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Les Shapiro along with Dave Logan, and there is plenty to motivate CU and Missouri today. CU, of course, begins defense of its Big 8 title. Missouri opens its conference schedule also, but maybe with a little more on their mind, Dave. Well, certainly Missouri remembers last year, and so do the Colorado Buffaloes. Missouri off to their best start since 1982. Bob Stoll feels like this team can get into a bowl if they continue to play well. He also thinks last year, if he had three plays back, they might have been 7-4 and four instead of 4-7. and seven. But because of last year's fifth down scenario, I think emotions will run much higher this afternoon on both sides of the field. Both coaches have tried to downplay that controversial situation from last year. Bob Stull has gone so far as to try and not talk about it at all in public. Well, Bob Stull may not talk about it to the media, but rest assured he has talked about it to his players, as has Bill McCartney. I think both coaches will use what happened last year individually to try to motivate their clubs. All right, when we get back, we'll talk about some key players missing from Missouri's lineup today, and we'll give you the starting line. Boy, have we been lucky this year. Another gorgeous day at Boulder's Folsom Field. We have yet to have to bring a coat up to Boulder for any of these ball games this year. Weather conditions, beautiful. The temperature is 79 degrees, very slight wind out of the southeast, and it's only going to get sunnier and warmer as the day goes on. This is homecoming for CU. The alumni marching band in the stands, a lot of the former cheerleaders and pom-pom people from years past here to help out the current squads. The Buffs ready to take the field along with Ralphie, the mascot. Right now the coin toss at midfield. And here comes Ralphie. finishes a run we find out that CU will receive the kickoff to begin the first half Dave coach McCartney very worried about his team's consistency coming off the loss at Stanford two weeks ago especially the consistency on defense well it was Bill McCartney's probably one of his top most disappointing losses uh, in his tenure here they just didn't go out and execute and there were times when they just didn't play hard. That's something that, as a coach, you cannot accept. So they have worked very hard in practice the last couple of weeks. 
physically they've been banged up a little bit. Darian Hagan, the quarterback, has an assortment of injuries, but he is going to play. They need his leadership in the game. They obviously need his skill in the game, but Hagan, I would say, today is probably about 80% healthy. You see some of his numbers, five touchdown passes against two interceptions. Hagan has thrown effective when they've given him an opportunity to throw. Hagan coming off a bout with the flu this week, and then last week, a nagging hamstring, knee, and ankle injury. He has proven to be very fragile in the last couple years up here in Boulder. As for Missouri, they've got a wonderful passing game. They lead the Big 8, and the man in charge of that passing game is quarterback Phil Johnson. I think today you'll have a chance to see one of the up-and-coming stars of the Big 8 Conference, Phil Johnson at 6'5 and 205 pounds. He's a 4'5'40 guy, which gives him great elusiveness. You can't pin him in the pocket. He can run away from the pass rush. You see his numbers almost 1,000 yards so far this season, seven touchdowns and six interceptions. They average close to 270 yards a game throwing the football. That will be something that certainly will challenge CU here this afternoon. One problem for Johnson and Missouri as we look at the series record, the Tigers lead it all together. That should be 33-19-3. and three. However, the Buffs have won the last six meetings. The problem for Johnson and Missouri today is he is missing two of his key receivers. Starting wide out, Victor Bailey did not make the trip. He is a bad shin. Starting tight end, Byron Chamberlain did not make the trip. He has an ankle injury. He is the leading pass catcher in the Big Eight. And on the defensive side for Missouri, they will be missing their left tackle on the defensive line, Rick Lyle. He made the trip. However, he will not be in uniform because of an injury. The Buffs take the field, getting ready to receive the kickoff. CU 2-2 two and two on the year. Missouri with its best schedule, excuse me, its best record going into the conference schedule at 2-1-1. One, and one. This is the conference opener for both teams. CU going for back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back titles, trying to earn its third consecutive trip to the Orange Bowl. Back to receive the kickoff for CU will be Chris Hudson and Charles Johnson. And kicking off for the Missouri Tigers will be Jeff Jackie. Now you can run the ball back against Missouri. They're not very good at defending this. Opponents are averaging 26 yards each kickoff return against the Tigers. So watch for either Hudson or Charles Johnson to possibly break one right off the bat. Bit of a delay here as the officials discuss something in the middle of the field while the referee talks to Missouri head coach Bob Stull on the sideline. We should mention, harking back to last year's controversial game, J.C. Lauterbach was the referee in that game. He is no longer refereeing in the Big 8 or anywhere else because he has reached the mandatory retirement age in the conference, 57 years old. All the other officials from the game last year are back working Big 8 games. Right now, let's go down to the field. Mark McIntosh will be with us all day reporting from the sidelines. Mac? Thank you very much, Les. You're talking about some Missouri wide receivers that will miss the ball game because of some injuries. Well, we found out just shortly, a little time ago, that Rico Smith, the Buffs senior wide receiver, is very doubtful to play today. Rico has some tendonitis problems around his Achilles tendon, and I was talking to Dave Burton. He said it's very doubtful that Rico Smith will see action today for the Buffs. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Mark. Dave, that's quite a blow because that is the Buffs' best deep threat. Well, he gives them speed on the outside, uh, but he has been hampered in practice for the last 10 days, so you would think that CU has had a chance to adjust to the loss of Rico Smith, and Charles Johnson more than likely will be the guy that will step in and fill his shoes. You might even see Robbie James get into the game a bit with Smith out. James, the senior from Strasburg. And the Buffs might even go to Mark Henry a little more, their wingback. You always get worried when you see the officials convene <laughs> right in the middle of the field five minutes before the game should have started. This almost feels like an instant replay delay. This is something they absolutely don't need as you take a look at today's officials. Your crew headed by referee Larry Fisher, Ron Johnson, the umpire, Hal Dowden, Ken Hopp, Terry Porter, Dwayne Osborne, 
And Artie Polk is the back judge. All right, the officials break as you see Bill McCartney in his 10th year here at CU. An overall record of 59 wins, 48 losses, and two ties. And this game today ties him with former coach Dal Ward in the category of games coached at CU, 110 all together. The only man still ahead of Bill McCartney is the former athletic director here at CU, Eddie Crowder. We are about to kick off at Folsom Field. Charles Johnson and Chris Hudson wait. The kick is deep. Hudson no chance at it, and the Buffs will start with it at their own 20-yard line. Let's set the CU offense for you. The quarterback, of course, the senior, Darian Hagan. Behind him, a couple of young running backs, James Hill and Ken Call. Mark Henry is your wing back. Rico Smith will not be in the lineup today, and Sean Embry is the tight end. And the offensive line for the Buffs, Craig Anderson. Roger Ivey moves in for Clint Moore, whose play has been disappointing so far. Jay Lewenberg at center, Dolan Jackson, and Jim Hansen. First and 10 from their own 20. Three men lined up behind Hagen in the backfield. And the pitch goes to Call, who gets about four yards. A host of Tigers in on the tackle, including the middle linebacker, Will Bass. The Missouri defense looks like this. John Watkins will move in for the injured Rick Lyle. Mario Johnson, George Hunt, Stacey Elliott in the 4-3 defense. The linebackers are Ken Gardner, Bass, and Reiner. And the defensive backs, Maurice Benson, a Jim Thorpe candidate, Jason Oliver, Brad Scribner, and Sharon Washington. Second and six for the Buffs. Hagen takes it left side, has an opening, and a lot of room to run. And Hagen gets it up to the 45-yard line, his own 45, before he's run out of bounds by the safety scripter. Colorado came into the game trying to get involved in more option football and trying to test the perimeter of the Missouri defense. The first pitch went to Kent Call. This time, Hagen does an excellent job of stretching the defense, making those inside guys run. You see as Hagen eluded the first tackler, and you will see Colorado today offensively concentrate on pounding the football against this Missouri defense. Darian Hagan off to a good start. Missouri defensively is averaging, giving up 247 yards per game on the ground. There are Hagan's stats for this year. And tack on another 10 yards, a penalty against Missouri. The run by Hagan went 21 yards for CU's all-time offensive leader, in yardage. He passed Bobby Anderson on that all-time list a couple of weeks ago. Michael Westbrook in the game, lined up behind Hagen. The Buffs on the Missouri 45. That's Westbrook in motion. A good rush on Hagen. Penalty flags down. Hagen going deep. Overthrown and the pass is broken up. Couple of flags on the field, and the call will go against the Buffs. Looks like holding. No, no, I think they got Missouri offsides, Les. Well, I saw the referee point the other way and give a holding signal. Let's see what he says. Well, well, we're, we're both right. Yeah. <laughs> Hanging that time trying to elude the rush. I'm not certain if he was throwing this ball to Mark Henry. You see the offsides there as Mario Johnson Got off a little bit too quickly. Hagan eludes the rush and then tries to make something happen downfield. Stacy Elliott with the pressure. But the bus called for holding, so they will line up and do it again. The penalties negate each other. It's still first and 10 from the Missouri 45. Another good rush on Hagan. Tries to put a little juke on a man. Brought down at the 39-yard line. Call it a gain of six. And even senior quarterbacks can mentally make mistakes. That time, Darian Hagan turned around and everybody was gone. Hagan just improvised, and that's one of his truly great assets. You see the all-time total offensive leader at the University of Colorado with over 4,500 yards. Bill McCartney, three times the coach of the year in the Big Eight. 
that's not too bad when the play busts and you still get six yards out of it. Testament to Darian Hagan's quickness. It's second and five. The give goes to the fullback hill. Breaks a couple tackles, gets it down to the 34. And he probably has the first down before Tom Reiner and Maurice Benson bring it down. One of the qualities, obviously, of having a good option attack is you must run the football. You must run the ball inside with that fullback. Make the defense stop your inside running game. And James Hill, coming off a nagging injury to his ankle, able to pull away and gain the necessary yardage for the first down. Well, those are not the dimensions of your conventional fullback, but James Hill has a way of shaking off the tacklers, and he did pick up the first down there. The Buffs with it at the Missouri 35. Hagan up the middle. Down to the 27. Will Bass and Kent Gardner the tackle. Let's go down to the sidelines and Mark McIntosh. Thank you, Les. Some of you Buff fans out there watching the ball game might be curious as to why the Buffs are wearing black pants at home. Well, after that Stanford loss, Bill McCartney put them through two weeks of torturous practices, and it's a new beginning, the Big 8 season, and so they thought they'd come out with a new look. Black on black. Back upstairs. As some of the players called it Boulder Boot Camp the last two weeks. Senior defensive back Greg Thomas says it's it was the toughest stretch of practices he's experienced. Kent Call spins away from a couple tacklers. Finally gang tackled down at the 23. Washington and Scrivener there to do it. Missouri, Missouri playing their linebackers very, very deep in the 4-3. Take a look there, five yards off the ball as they wait for the option. A good lead block by James Hill, and Kent Cole again, I think, at his best when he runs between the tackles. The slashing style of running called very, very strong and tough to tackle. And I can hear the Missouri defensive coordinator saying to his kids right now, you gotta wrap them up. They've missed quite a few tackles in this early going. First and 10 from the Missouri 23-yard line. CU showing a lot of wishbone formation today. The pitch goes to Call. He fumbles it and falls on it. Back at the 34, call it a loss of 10, maybe 11 yards even. That's a look right at the line of scrimmage that Darian Hagan knows is going to be a quick read. Jermaine Wilkins, one of the safeties on the line of scrimmage. So as a quarterback, you know that the option is going to be a quick one, and you're going to have to make a quick pitch. Hagan tried to get it out with both hands and simply tossed it behind Kent Cole. Second and 21 for the Buffs. Hagan wants to throw. He does to Mark Henry. And the pass is caught at the 21. A gain of 14 yards. Mark Henry has turned into one of the outstanding receivers for this Buff team. This will be just a comeback, and the good thing he does, gets under the football with his hands. The pass is going to be a little bit low, but Henry getting both hands, well, I tell you, that, that was a trap. The ball bounced into Mark Henry's chest, and Colorado looked like they got away with one there. It's third and eight for the Buffs. Well, Henry comes from quite an athletic family. His sister, Mindy, is on basketball scholarship here at CU. Hagan has a man, Westbrook, touchdown! Michael Westbrook, the freshman out of Detroit, wide open in the end zone. Colorado got Michael Westbrook on a linebacker. You see Tom Reiner, one of the inside linebackers, the 6'1", 240-pound senior. That is a mismatch trying to cover a kid like Michael Westbrook's got the defense they wanted and a good touch pass by Hagan. The extra point attempt by Harper is good. And the Buffs take an early 7-0 lead against Missouri. We've got 10.45 to go in the first quarter. Tigers gambled early. They're in a the man-to-man coverage. You see number 55, Daryl Major, the center of your screen, running to the running back. On the right side, Tom Ryder, there is trying to cover Michael Westbrook's man-to-man. -man. Nobody in the middle of the field to help Reiner, the linebacker, and the results, a touchdown pass from Darian Hagan to Michael Westbrook. Mitch Berger kicking off for the Buffs. He has a tendency to put it out of the end zone and not allow the opponent to run it back. 
and running it back, or the attempt will be made by number 22, Jason Oliver, and number one, Skip Leach for Missouri. And there it is, as we predicted. Berger, clear out of the end zone by a good five yards. Boy, what a weapon that is when you do it consistently. Penalty flag on the play. Probably going to be offsides. All right, so the penalty goes against the bus, and they'll kick it again. Bring it back five yards to the 30. This shouldn't bother Mitch Berger much. He just put it five years, five yards out of the end zone. And you can see for the year, out of his 22 kickoffs, only nine have been returned. It's a tremendous percentage. I've always wondered why you can't find more NFL kickers who can do that. Then again, not many NFL kickers play at this altitude. Well, we have a little back for the kickoff. Kicking off number 17, Mitch Berger. Back Again, Jason Berger. Oliver and Skip Leach are back to return it. This time, it's a clean kickoff. About five yards deep, and Leach will not return this one either. So Missouri will have 80 yards to go. And here's the Missouri offense. Phil Johnson, the leading passer in the big eight. Ron L. Cahill, Kenneth Dunn, Skip Leach at flanker, Kenny Holly, and Lemmy Wills are the receivers. And the line, Doug Hembro, Mike Podoski, Brad Funk, a three-year starter at center, Don Wright, and Russ McCullough. A look at Phil Johnson. He's a sophomore out of Springfield, Missouri. He succeeds Kent Kiefer, who was a pretty good quarterback for Missouri last year, threw for more than 300 yards against the Buffs. Missouri comes out throwing. Maybe. Johnson turns the corner, picks up first down yardage, and goes out of bounds at the 31. Run out by Ronnie Wolford. The CU defense, you've got Leonard Renfro, the preseason All-American, Joel Steed at nose tackle, not wearing a cast on that broken hand anymore, Marcellus Elder. The linebackers are Chad Brown, Greg Beekert, John Knutson, the freshman, and Ronnie Wolfort. And the defensive backs, Deion Figures, Ronnie Bradford, Eric Hamilton, and the senior co-captain, Greg Thomas. It's first and ten. The give went to Michael Washington, and he gets maybe a yard. A lot of black jerseys there to bring him down. Missouri so far this year has had an excellent passing offense. They've averaged, as we mentioned, over 250 yards a game, and you can thank that man if you're a Missouri fan. Bob Stahl, in his third year, coming in from UTEP, he has installed the pro-type offense. They have, however, had problems running the football. They've averaged only two and a half yards per carry. And that's something that's going to have to improve if they're going to be successful in the Big A Conference. The best passing team in conference, the worst rushing team. And it's second and nine. Johnson rolls left. Takes off on this one also. Out of bounds at the 38. Call it a gain of six. So far, the CU defensive backs, including Ronnie Bradford, who ran him out there, very good coverage. And the last, last couple of plays indicative of what Phil Johnson can do. He has great speed, especially for a kid this big. He's 6'5 and over 200 pounds. And once things break down, he's not going to be nifty and make a lot of moves and make you miss, but he will outrun your perimeter defense, and he'll gain yards as he's doing it. I'll tell you what kind of athletic prowess and what kind of body this kid has. His teammates call him Zeus. Anybody ever call you Zeus? Not lately. That's Washington. Gets maybe a yard. Well short of the first down, and Missouri will have to punt the ball. Back to return the kick for CU. 
Darian Hagan, and there's the man punting the ball, Mark Plunkett. He averages 39 yards a kick so far this year. That snap bounces in, but Plunkett fields it and then puts the ball well over Darian Hagan's head. Bounces into the end zone, a 63-yard kick. And the Buffs will have it at their own 20 when we get back from this break. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan at Boulder's Folsom Field. You see the score right there. The Buffs off to a quick start. 7-0 over Missouri, and the Buffs have the ball right now. Darian Hagan, two-time All-Big 8 quarterback out of Los Angeles. And with that touchdown pass to Michael Westbrook, he broke a record here at CU. The previous record, six consecutive games with a touchdown pass. Hagan just did it for the seventh game in a row. First and ten from the 20. Hagan slips, gets his bearing, and gets his to his tight end, Sean Brown. Up to the 37. Call it a gain of 17. Will Bass and Jason Oliver bring Brown down. Colorado has been most effective this year when they've come out with play action on first down. Because Hagen slips, it throws off the timing of the pattern. And you'll notice Kit Call in the same area as Sean Brown. But Brown with excellent hands. He's the guy that Hagen likes to look to early in the game. Hagen showing the balance reminiscent of a, a cousin of his, the NFL's all-time leading rusher, Walter Payton. Distant cousins, but cousins nonetheless. First and ten. Hagen tries to pitch it as he's fighting off a tackler. Probably not a prudent move, but the Buffs weren't hurt by it too much. The ball went out of bounds, and they will retain the ball. Putting the pressure on him was the outside linebacker, Tom Reiner. Missouri defensively, they feel like will be improved this year, although statistically it probably hasn't shown. But Reiner realizes it's going to be the option. He undercuts. He comes right through the lane, gets to Hagen as Darian tries to force the ball to can't call. Excellent play by Tom Reiner. Are you surprised to see you showing so much option? No, not at all. Missouri with the 4-3 defense, you're able to get to the corner, and they want to make sure those kids inside can run. Second and 13, complete to Mark Henry on a crossing pattern. And Henry... Gets it up to his own 47-yard line. That'll be a first down. And this is game plan-wise. You see Brad Scribner out on Mark Henry. Just a stop pattern, realizing the cushion of about 10 yards will enable Henry to catch it and then get upfield. Jason Oliver and Scribner both on the tackle. But offensively, you take what the defense gives you. If they're going to line up and play your wide receivers and give them that kind of cushion, you have to throw the ball and force him to change that coverage. And the measuring sticks are out. You see CU gets the first down by about a foot and a half. Bill McCartney pacing the sideline. He's always nervous when he's playing his alma mater, Missouri. What is that? A fish. <laughs> I hope the hat smells better than it looks. Hagen passing on the day so far is perfect. Four for four for 64 yards. This time it goes to the fullback, James Hill. He grabs about three yards. Will Bass, the tackle. Well, we talked about the season series. Missouri leading it by a wide margin, however. Up here in Boulder, when these two teams get together, it's even Steven. 13 wins, 13 losses, one tie. On the 50-yard line, the Buffs have the ball, second and seven. Hagan on the run. The throw is wide, intended for Charles Johnson. There's a case where Darian Hagan, we've got an injured Missouri player. Hagan had Charles Johnson open. Westbrook in motion, runs to the sideline. Charles Johnson just on a simple hook. The ball was thrown too far away. See Notre Dame in the second quarter leading Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh 5-0 and this year, but the fighting Irish had 14 nothing. Well, so far, you're proving me wrong on that game. I thought Pittsburgh uh, would have a shot at Notre Dame, at least to beat the points. Notre Dame right now doing a number on them. The injured player on the field being carried off is a defensive lineman, Matt Murray. He's a freshman out of Carbondale, Illinois. Ironically, 
He majors in health-related professions. Let's take a look at how he got hurt. To the left side of the screen, you can see Murray gets his right ankle rolled up on. He's done for the day. Hmm. Turf is unforgiving. Third and seven for the Buffs. Once again, three running backs lined up behind Hagen. That's Westbrook in motion. Hagen looking downfield. Throws a wobbler. Incomplete. And for the first time today, the Buffs will bring the punting unit onto the field. And their punter is the same man who kicks off. Number 17, Mitch Berger, who's averaging a bit over 41 yards a kick. Back to receive it for Missouri is Maurice Benson, who happens to average 18 yards a return, one of the best in the nation. He'll let this one fall, though, and Berger does not get the bounce he wanted. It goes through the end zone, and Missouri will have the ball at its own 20. A 50-yard kick for Berger. Well, he has really done a job for the Buffs this year. The latest in a long line of very fine CU putters. In fact, a putter from the past, an All-American, Barry Helton, is with the San Francisco 49ers this year. He's been injured all year. However, the 49ers are about to activate him. This telecast is an exclusive presentation of KCNC and the National Broadcasting Company and is intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or retransmission of this telecast without the express written consent of KCNC is prohibited. Missouri tries to run the ball, but to no avail. Quite puts a lot of pressure on your quarterback when you just cannot establish even a semblance of a running game. Missouri, as we told you, unable so far in their previous four games to really get things going on the ground and they've relied on Phil Johnson and his arm and some timely turnovers by the defense to win games but in this league you have to run at least a little bit to keep people honest we're under the seven minute mark in the first quarter second and ten and that's Washington again this time a loss of two yards Chad Brown this team's leading tackler does it that time Brown and Greg Baker are both averaging 12 and a half tackles a game. See Chad Brown with 31 tackles on the season, 19 assists. He had 17 tackles against Stanford a couple of weeks ago, and he's just starting now to feel more comfortable at outside linebacker. He's got the range and the speed, but until you line up there and you play a few plays, you don't get the knack up. He also leads the Buffs in sacks with five and a half this year. Bill Johnson goes back into the shotgun now on third and 12. Good pressure. Chad Brown almost has him. Johnson scampers up to about the 28-yard line, a gain of 10, but he's a couple yards short of the first down. Joel Steen and Greg Thomas make the tackle. Good pressure by the Colorado defense. You see Phil Johnson over talking to the coaches. They've got to find a way to protect the quarterback or get that running game going a bit. Can't be three downs and out all the time to put too much pressure on your defense. Mark Plunkett with a nice first kick today, 63 yards. He'll be kicking to Darian Hagan. Plunkett, another line drive. Hagan, a chance to return. Flags on the field as Hagan gets righted out on the 40-yard line. A 49-yard punt, an 18-yard return for Hagan. I don't know about you, but there is this black helicopter circling the stadium, and it's very low and making me very nervous. <laughs> Keep thinking of Black Sunday, don't you? I saw that movie Flip. a couple of weeks ago. During the return on the receiving team. That's the movie where the terrorists rode the helicopter down into the Super Bowl stadium. Les, let's not talk about that now. Okay, I won't. <laughs> Take a look. There's multiple fouls. Eric Hamilton there. Number six, the right side of your screen. And also, that's probably a clip by Chris O'Donnell. Number 45 is Hagan trying to break it to the outside. All right, with 5.21 to go in the first quarter, the Buffs lead at 7 zip. We'll be right back. 
Darian Hagan is sitting down for the time being on the punt return as he gets run out of bounds by Sharon Washington. He gets run right into the ground. It looks like he landed on his shoulder. And Vance Joseph is in the game for the Buffaloes. We'll give you a, a report on Darian Hagan as soon as one becomes available. There's a look at Joseph on the year, 50% passer. This time he hands the ball off. Lamont Warren up to the 21. Maurice Benson brought him down. There's Darian Hagan. You see Dave Burton, the trainer for the CU Bucks. <laughs> I wonder with all the injuries the last couple years of Hagan is sorry he chose a baseball career over football. He was quite a shortstop in college or in high school, excuse me, and he was also drafted a couple times while in college. But never took uh, any of the teams up on that offer. Vance Joseph calls a timeout on the field, the first time out the Buffs have taken today. Joseph, the sophomore out of Marrero, Louisiana. He has gotten a lot of work. Last year, the Buffs had a lot of blowouts, and Vance Joseph saw action late in those games. And this year, with all the nagging injuries Hagan's had, Bill McCartney has put Vance Joseph into the game quite a bit. I don't think Bill McCartney is very happy about that. The reason Colorado called timeout, they had 12 men in the formation. Mark Henry and Charles Johnson both in the game, and by the time Vance Joseph realized it, he had to call timeout. Vance Joseph is a capable backup that I think really has a promising future in the next couple of years. He can throw the ball. He may not be at this stage of his career as explosive as Darian Hayden, but he can run the option. He makes good decisions, and I think he and Cordell Stewart certainly will have a battle the next couple of years to see who's the starting quarterback. He's quite the athlete, just like Hagan. When he was 12 years old, he went to a world basketball tournament, and he was voted the most valuable player, Mr. Biddy World. Is what he called him. Joseph on the option. Went down quickly. Gained a couple of yards. Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh. Thank you, Les. Here's an update on Darian Hagan on that punt return. He got hit in the nose. He kind of just got his bell rung. He's expected to be all right. We'll probably be back in at least on the next series for CU. Back up to you guys. All right, so Vance Joseph taking charge of this team. If you're wondering if anything happens to Vance Joseph, the Buffs can bring in a heralded freshman, also from Marrero, Louisiana, Cordell Stewart. A young man a lot of people say is the future of this Buffs program. Ironically, last year in this very same game in Columbia, it was a second-team quarterback that led the CU Buffs to victory. Charles Johnson came off the bench, an 88-yard drive, a 15-play drive. That, of course, resulted in the fifth-down scenario, but Hagan is back in the game. Vance Joseph returns to the sideline. Well, the Buffs did get a first down on that last run by Joseph. So it'll be first and 10 from their own 23-yard line. Four and a half minutes to go, first quarter. The give to Lamont Warren. Not much room to wander. He's thrown for a loss of a couple of yards by big Mario Johnson, six foot five, 310 pounds. I bet that hurts. Mario Johnson was highly recruited by a number of schools, including Colorado. And for a while, the Buffs felt like they had a pretty good shot to get the young Johnson, but he has turned out to be a whale of a player for the Tigers. I think whale is an appropriate word. They say he plays best at 285, and he's about 25 pounds heavier than that. I hope he doesn't get wind that I said that. Under four minutes to go. The Buffs lead at 7 and nothing. I hope he realizes it was you. <laughs> Hagan back in the ballgame now. Throwing deep for Henry, but he is out of bounds. They say he was out of bounds before he caught the pass, not as he caught the pass. Well, you can be out of bounds before you catch the pass as long as you are forced out by a defensive back. I'll tell you, Henry catches the ball, and his left foot will come down in bounds. Mark Henry in the air. Watch his left foot. Tough to see. It was in bounds, but the official rule that Henry ran out of bounds, Jason Oliver on the coverage, and evidently Oliver did not force Henry out of bounds. Therefore... That negates the play. So it'll be third and 11 for the Buffs. We just got word from the Missouri bench that defensive end Matt Murray will not come back into the ballgame after spraining his right ankle.
Well, the referee just confirmed what we told you a few seconds ago. It is third down and 11 for the Buffs. And once again, Hagen is back at quarterback. This time, Lamont Warren to give. Across the 40 to midfield. A gain of 28 yards for Lamont Warren, the freshman out of Inglewood, California. Now Bill McCartney said he had a banged up shoulder much of last week. But I tell you, this is a big time run. Warren on third and 11. Watch not only how many tackles he breaks, but the decisions he makes. There he cuts back, good blocking up front. Now this is supposed to be a tackle that stops Warren. That's Sharon Washington, one of the more sure tacklers on the Missouri club. But Warren at 190 pounds simply runs right through Washington and picks up the first down. A lot of missed tackles for Missouri today. Hagan on the option again. It's the reverse to Westbrook. Evades one tackler. And evades about three more before finally going down at the Missouri 41. Michael Westbrook with some very good ad-libbing on that play. And he picks up seven yards. The Westbrook we've seen before has the capability of throwing the ball off this play, but this is a designed run supposed to go around the end. Westbrook said, all right, I'll come back out there. Cuts back inside, and Westbrook at about 200 pounds was so tired after the play that he laid in the ground. And he's still tired, as you can see. He ran about 55 yards to pick up seven. And he's in shape. Just think how we'd be looking after that play. Second and three. The pitch back to Hagan. Looking deep, a wide open, Charles Johnson at the 30. And finally out of bounds at the 29. A little tomfoolery from Bill McCartney. When you establish the running game, obviously the defense has to play it, respect it. The draw, the lead, I should say, to Warren. You see the linebackers bite. Hagan trying to get the ball deep to Mark Henry on the go pattern, and Charles Johnson, the second receiver, comes all by himself across the field. He also will break the tackle. Scribner there has a chance, can't quite get him down. Pick up another first down. 14 yards on that last play. Got a timeout on the field. We've got another little tidbit from Mark McIntosh on the field. Mark? Thank you very much, guys. You know, you saw that fancy pass that went to Charles Johnson. Well, this week, they worked on that play extensively in practice. But Bill McCartney always told us to turn off your cameras when they're working on that. That's one of the, the trick plays they put in for this ball game to try, try to surprise the Missouri Tigers. Back up to you guys. Well, Mark, as an objective reporter, you're supposed to uh, tell us those things are coming. Well, he made us turn <laughs> off the cameras. I understand that. called by Missouri the Tigers first time out each team has two left this half we've got 220 to go in the first quarter a look at the Missouri sideline the Tigers down seven to nothing to the bus you know we've talked so much about the fifth down controversy from last year Dave. So they went up. the game clock starts running on this Saturday Nobody really thinks about last year, do they? Well, the players don't. I think fans probably will remember that particular game for the next 10 to 15 years. They'll be talking about that game when you and I and everybody else will be long gone. Well, the Broncos may be taking the week off, but Channel 4 and NBC Sports will still be here tomorrow to bring the best in NFL football. At 11 a.m., the Browns and the Redskins. And at 2 o'clock, Miami and the Kansas City Chiefs. It starts tomorrow morning at 10.30 right here on Channel 4. Hagan left side on the option. Flagged down on the field before Hagan goes out of bounds at the 12. I think this is going to come back because Mark Henry, number 25, who's in motion, I believe, turned up the field too soon. Well, you're absolutely right. A procedure call against the Buffs. What costly mistake there. Henry and wingback in motion toward the formation side. Just turned up to get the block before Hagan had the ball in his hands. Procedure, not enough men on the line on the offense. Repeat first down, five yards. They actually called not enough men on the line. Bill McCartney unhappy with that.
Well, so far, total yardage, CU dominating this ball game, 157 yards, Missouri with a paltry 25 yards. However, the game is still very close, a one touchdown difference. First and 15 for the Buffs from the Mizzou 34. Hagan, a little dump pass taken in by Lamont Warren. A nice move, picks up a few extra yards. Down to the Missouri 27. John Watkins finally brings him down. And really, in recent years, you haven't seen Colorado get their tailback involved too much in the, in the passing game. With Eric Bienemy and J.J. Flanagan so proficient in running the football. Hagan, just a little dunk pass over the middle. And watch the move by Lamont Warren. Whoop. A couple go by, and he picks up an additional five or six yards. Those are the kinds of moves that you just simply can't teach. Here's a kid that was in high school last year that obviously has mastered at least a few of them. And he was a quarterback in high school. Second and eight, Hagan. A wild pitch. Let's see how it's called. Out of bounds. CU will keep it because Missouri could not get a handle before it went out of bounds. Jason Oliver, the closest Tiger to it, couldn't gather it in. Well, Missouri is doing a better job defensively at taking on the blocks at the line of scrimmage and stringing out the play. Now, this is a pitch that Darian Hagan simply cannot make. He lost his footing and tried to pitch it on his way down. And you can see Maurice Benson did everything but corral the football. Must have touched it three or four times. Most teams that play CU stick one man on Darian Hagan, the quarterback. They say, you keep your eyes on that young number three. And wherever he goes, you go. But so far, the majority of the first quarter, Missouri has had trouble stymieing Darian Hagan, doing a much better job in this last series, however. First and 10 for the Buffs on Missouri 18. One line out for CU. Top of your screen is Charles Johnson. The get goes to call a big hole down to the 10 yard line. A gain of eight. The Buff offensive line doing a good job of getting a push, and they have worked on this extensively this week. Lewenberg, Ivy. You see Anderson, Dolan Jackson, number 74. And a good look at Kent Call, the true freshman out of Fort Morgan, Colorado. Coached by his dad, Rich, in high school. It's second and two. We've got 45 seconds to go in the first quarter. This is Call again in another big hole and another five yards. He picks up the first down, so it'll be first and goal for the Buffs. Touchdown lead. Very close to making it two touchdowns. Michael Westbrook comes into the game for Mark Henry. Three backs behind Darian Hagan. James Hill, the fullback, gets in. He pulls his way in for the touchdown. Well, that was too easy, David. And that two a play that they had just put in for the Missouri game. Lined up in the power bone. Hill, the fullback. You see the action to the left side, but Hill will cut back to the right. Sean Brown with a good job of running down the defensive end. And James Hill met at the two-yard line by Sharon Washington, just not going to be denied. Hill, the sophomore out of Whitefield High School in Colorado Springs. Jim Harper, the extra point. He's got it. And the Buffs have a 14-0 lead with 25 seconds to go in the first quarter. Well, this is what you like to see at homecoming. You usually make homecoming a game on the schedule you think you can win. And the Buffs certainly think they can win this one. They actually need to win this one because next week might be their toughest game on the conference schedule. They go to Norman, Oklahoma to play the Sooners. Now it's going to be one of their toughest, if not the toughest. And aside from just winning the game, I think Colorado has to regain some of their confidence that, that obviously was lost in Palo Alto, California a couple of weeks ago. Bill McCartney was just not happy with a number of things, and most importantly, you as a team have to believe you can win every time out. James Hill, the fullback, to the right side. The blocking goes down. You see the Tigers in a stunt. Excellent job up front again. Good job that time by Jim Hansen, the right tackle, and James Hill into the end zone. 
And now offensively for Missouri, I think important in this series to get something going, even if they don't put points on the board. They have been completely stymied by the CU defense, and that's the strength of the Missouri team, their offense. Mitch Berger putting the ball on the tee and back to receive the kickoff for Missouri. Jason Oliver is number 22 on the right side of your screen, and on the left is Skip Leach. They're pretty good at this task. Jason Oliver, 19 yards per return, and Skip Leach averages 22 yards. And so far, they haven't had a chance because Mitch Berger has put it well over their heads all afternoon. This one's a bit short for Berger. Jason Oliver takes it at its own five. Oh, Chris Hudson grabbed the jersey and brought him down. I'll tell you what, if Hudson didn't do that, you're looking at another 10, 15 yards for Oliver. Instead, Missouri will start with it at its own 24-yard line. Chris Hudson has really done a job for the Buffs this year. He's a freshman redshirt out of Houston. He's playing so well that in the last couple weeks, head coach Bill McCartney has considered putting him into the starting lineup instead of co-captain Greg Thomas, the senior. Hudson gets a lot of game time. Phil Johnson still at quarterback for Mizzou. The get goes to Ron L. Cahill. And he gets a couple of yards before Chad Brown does the number on him. Well, we're coming down to the end of the first quarter. The teams will allow the clock to run out. One second. Zeros reading on the scoreboard. And we're going to take a break here with the Bucks leading after one quarter. 14 to nothing. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan at Folsom Field in Boulder. You see the score right there. The Buffs leading by 14. What a great day for football. Hardly any wind. A lot of sun. Very few clouds. It ought to stay this way the rest of the afternoon. And Missouri has the ball right now. Look at James Hill on the CU sideline. Scored the last touchdown for the Buffs. Missouri with second and nine. Johnson is back in the shotgun with four wide receivers lined up on the line. That pass incomplete. Beaker, good coverage. On number 81, Kenny Holley. Here are your first quarter stats. And you take a look at it, Missouri with one first down and 26 yards of total offense. None of them coming with the passing game. Buffs, of course, with 106 yards of rushing, 85 in the passing game from 191 total. They have completely dominated both sides of the line of scrimmage here in the early going and their defensive backs have been able to take away those wide receivers as we've said Missouri without Victor Bailey maybe their best wide receiver but so far nobody has really come open Byron Chamberlain also did not make the trip he's their tight end who plays like a wide receiver Mark McIntosh has something for us on the sideline Mark thank you very much Les you might be able to see right now Jay Lunenberg the Buffs starting center senior co-captain is having his blood sugar check Buff fans might know that Jay Lundberg is a diabetic. He has to take two insulin shots per day to control the diabetes. And right now, he's having that blood sugar level check by team physicians. If they find out there's a problem with that, they'll uh, try to take corrective action to take care of it. But it looks like he'll probably come back in the ballgame. But he was feeling a little woozy when he came off the field after the Buffs touchdown series. And they're checking that blood sugar level right now. Back up to you guys. You also might have noticed that his right hand is wrapped up. In fact, it is a cast because three weeks ago, Lewenberg broke his right hand, the hand he snaps the ball with, in practice. However, he has not missed a game. Against Stanford two weeks ago, he snapped with his left hand, and now he's back to snapping with the right. You see the time of possession. That's what happens when you can run the football, and conversely, Missouri, with a little over four minutes of possession time, they haven't been able to run it. And, and actually, Phil Johnson, the last play attempted... Missouri's first pass of the afternoon. He's gone back a couple of times, but he's had to pull it down and run. I want to go back to something you said a couple of minutes ago about Missouri with zero yards passing. That's quite a mean feat by the CU defense because the Tigers average 251 yards a game in the air and zero in the first quarter here. Third and nine, Johnson in the shotgun again. Good pressure. Johnson on the run. Finally gets it off incomplete. The intended receiver was Holly, but three black shirts chasing Johnson to the sideline, making him throw off balance. It was Leonard Renfro, Ronnie Woolfork, two of the three. 
And that time, Colorado really putting pressure on Phil Johnson with a four-man rush. Missouri not doing a good job up front. If you give Phil Johnson time, he can throw the ball. But very difficult when running to your left to pick up that much yard, yardage. Well, the Buffs are going to try something different today. Chris Hudson is returning punts for the first time all year. Gathers it in at his own 34 and has a hole up the middle. An open highway. Inside the Missouri 35, Chris Hudson. One of the luxuries of having a defensive back as your punt returner, if he can catch the ball, they usually have more strength than a wide receiver or a running back that might return punts. You see Hudson shirk away from the first tackler, and he's got good broken field running ability. Brings that one back 33 yards, and the Buffs are in business again. His first punt return all year for 33 yards. We also have a change at center for the Buffs. It's Eros Gottlieb in for Jay Lewenberg. This is Hagen with a little room inside the Missouri 25. Penalty flag down. Maurice Benson, the tackle for Missouri. There's a look at Benson. The penalty might be on him. It's going to be a face mask right at the end of the tackle. Inadvertent face mask, five yards from the end of the run, first down. Take a look at it. Hagen into the secondary will get grabbed right there. It's Will Bass who grabbed the face mask. Right at the end of the tackle. So Tech on five more yards. And the Buffs have the ball at the Missouri 18. Lamont Warren inside the 15, down to the 14, gain of four. Boy, the Buffs are really blowing holes in that Missouri defensive line now. Well, I know Bob Stoll was concerned about his defense holding up against the CU offense, although CU certainly has not set the world on fire. They are big and strong up front, and you knew after two weeks of Bill McCartney's type practices, they'd come in ready to play. The disappointing thing for that man has been his offense. They haven't been able to generate anything. Forget the points, not even yardage. Second and six for the bus. This is James Hill with a lot of room inside the five. Boy, there is not a Tiger within five yards of these running backs. Sharon Washington finally makes the tackle. The Buffs threatening to turn this one into a blowout. This play designed to go inside. Look at the nice cut. Again, Missouri stunning up front. You can see Stacy Elliott get knocked down inside. A good block that time by Craig Anderson. Hill realizes the stunt, bounces it to the outside, and as you mentioned, there weren't any white jerseys anywhere to be found. Almost four and a half yards of carry for Hill this year. Pretty good when you consider he's a fullback. And those guys are used to just punching out one and two yards at a time. Well, this play will be stopped. About 17 linemen jumped at each other before the snap. Dead ball, encroachment on the offense. Five yards, repeat the down. Bill McCartney with a bit of a look of worry on his face, but if the Buffs can get in here, this is a three touchdown lead. Mark McIntosh, you got something for us. Yeah, a slight update on Jay Lewenberg. We had told you earlier his blood sugar level was being checked. He's also dehydrated. And there's a concern on the Buffs sideline right now. A lot of their players are getting dehydrated in this heat, and they're asking for more water. they got to keep the liquids in their players. It's a hot afternoon down here on this artificial turf. Back up to you guys. Well, it certainly is. It's in the low 80s in the stands. You can imagine it's about 5 or 10 degrees hotter on the turf. And these kids aren't used to this in the fall in Boulder, Colorado. We're going to take a break. 12.53 to go in the first half. The Buffs with a 14-0 lead and threatening. Go, See you cheerleading go. squad. I, I feel a flip cup. No, just a, a straight letdown. But no letdown on the field. The Buffs up 14-0 on the Missouri 8-yard line. Hagan. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, and run out of bounds at the seven. Call it a gain of one. Colorado 
Colorado this year has been inside their opponent's 20-yard line 13 times. They have scored 13 times. They've done a good job taking care of the football, realizing how important every possession is. You see, uh, that's a lot, a lot right there. Jay Lewenberg is dehydrated. He got to move on over there. Good night. Enough water to keep him going. She's working harder than some of the guys in the field. <laughs> Second and goal from the eight-yard line. Hagan wants to throw. And now he wants to run, and now he wants to throw again. Incomplete, broken up by Jason Oliver. And another flag on the field. Darian Hagan had a bit of a problem making up his mind there. I think he may have gone past the initial line of scrimmage. Once you do, you can't come back and throw it. Got a man downfield. And that can easily happen when your quarterback looks like he's going to run, then all of a sudden pulls it up and lets it go. Well, you are on every call today, aren't you? You're right there with line the Line of scrimmage is about the eight-yard line. Hagan. Ineligible downfield, five yards, repeat the down. Now, Hagan really wasn't past the line of scrimmage, but they did have a man downfield. Can you step over the line of scrimmage? and then come back behind it and pass the ball? No. Once you're over, you're over. Yep. You've got to run with the ball. As I just said, once you pass that line of scrimmage, you've got to keep going, although he didn't that particular play. Second and 13 for the Buffs from the 13. That ball is tipped, almost intercepted. Looks like Mario Johnson, the big guy, six foot five, might have gotten a hand on it from Florissant, Missouri. In years past, this would have been an ideal situation for the tailback screen. Eric Bieniemy got behind all those big offensive linemen, caught the ball, and they couldn't find him for about 20 yards. Well, they're lining up Lamont Warren just like the enemy used to. One running back behind Hagen, and he will get the ball. And a lot of room. Inside the five, down to the four. But still, short of the goal line, and it's fourth down for the Buffs. The crowd wants the Buffs to go for it. But this is probably the smart move. The field goal kicking team comes out. And Jay Lewenberg runs without his helmet. He is going to snap the ball. Jim Harper with the attempt. A 22-yard attempt. He is two for five on the season so far. Field goal kicker. And this one is right through the uprights. So the Buffs with a 17 to nothing lead right now. Jim Harper evens his record to three and six on the year. I should say a 50% record now. With 11.51 to go in the half. The Buffs by 17 points. Sunday nights are your sports nights here on Channel 4. Immediately, excuse me, immediately following the News 4 Late Edition at 10.35, it's the Bill McCartney Show featuring the coach himself along with our color analyst today himself, Dave Logan. They'll bring you all the highlights and analysis of today's game. Then it's Sports Extra with Gary Miller, where you'll hear KOA Radio's Sandy Clough's expert analysis of the Broncos, plus an introduction to a couple of high school coaches that have been coaching together for the past 25 years. It all starts at 10.35 this Sunday, following the News 4 Late Edition. McCartney, and then Sports Extra. Did I say Sandy Clough on KOA? I, I mean Sandy Clough on KBIN. He used to be with KOA. Uh, hard we hard all, to we, tell in these radio wars. We all bounce around. You used to be with KBIN. You're now with KOA. Yes, I am. Kind of a one-for-one one trade there. You can look at it that Logan way. Logan yes. for Clough. <laughs> Any future considerations on either side of that? Back to receive the kickoff from Missouri. Jason Oliver and Skip Leach. And this sails well over Skip Leach's head. I bet that really takes the gas out of the team, knowing they will rarely get a chance to. I tell you what, the guys that have to run down and cover those things, they love it. They are the kicker's best friends. 
buy him dinner, do whatever, take him to a movie, do whatever it takes to have him kick that way. And now, as we've mentioned, if Bob Stoll had some firecrackers, he might place them under the fannies of his offensive team. Time to get things going if you're a Tiger fan. The onus is on Phil Johnson, the Tigers quarterback. So far, struggling. This time, he has time. He had a wide open receiver, but the ball was tipped by, I believe, linebacker Ronnie Wolford. Well, Lemmy Wells is going to come clean across the field, and I think it was Chad Brown who made the great play. He got sucked inside by the play action, but had enough presence to back up, jump in the air, and tip the ball away from a wide open tight end. And Phil Johnson's got to be scratching his head. Well, that Chad Brown play brings back memories of last year's game against Notre Dame. Ten tackles, two deflected passes, and a forced fumble and a 10-9 win in the Orange Bowl. Bill Johnson, second and 10. Over the middle, in between two receivers, the ball bounces. I think Johnson might have had a bit of a time trying to figure out which one to go to and went in between them. And Kenny Holly and Skip Leach, two crossing patterns. What I see, Missouri receivers running and trying to look to see where the defensive backs are as well. Missouri's running a lot of crossing patterns, and as a receiver, you know that from time to time, when you catch one of those, you're going to get blasted. Third and ten, the crowd picking up the decibel level. Flag on the field. Didn't get it off in time, I don't think. Dead ball, delay on the offense, five yards, repeat the battle. So push Missouri back another five yards. It'll be third and 15 from their own 15. In Colorado this year coming into the game, their opponents had faced third and nine or more 26 times and had converted into first downs none of those 26 times. They are 0 for 26. and. Missouri's been in that situation a few times here today, and they haven't converted as well. And you can bring the house at him now. Watch for CU to blitz. Knowing full well, Missouri needs to pass the ball. In fact, Johnson goes back into the shotgun. Good pressure. The screen pass is complete to Cahill, but he is nowhere near first down yardage. And Missouri will have to punt again. Joel Steed the tackle on Cahill. Pretty good call the screen pass, and Cahill with a nice catch. But how many nose guards do you know that can run down running backs? As Joel Steed just did that time. And CU defensively, I think, so far, they've been the story of the game. Darian Hagan back in to return the punt for the Buffs after getting a respite. Hagan will field it as 24. Reverses field and gets it up to the 31. A punt of 53 yards and a return of about seven. 17 to nothing. The Buffs lead Missouri. 10.56 to go in the half. If the game seems like it's going a little slow, it's because with Missouri passing the ball as much as it does, the clock stops after each incompletion. And there have been plenty incompletions today on Missouri's side. First and ten for the Buffs at their own 30-yard line. Hagan across the 40. A wild pitch. Boy, he's done that three times today. Somebody's going to talk to him on the sideline next time he ambles over. And flags on the field. Well after the play, three different officials threw the yellow flag into the air. I think it may have been a forward pitch. That's what we'll find out here. Having an illegal forward pass thrown forward beyond the line of scrimmage. Five yards, loss of down from the spot of the pass. Remember a couple of years ago when Darian Hagan in Norman, Oklahoma, made a great pitch almost falling flat on his face. And it resulted in a touchdown for Colorado. 
after you do something like that, especially early in your career, you have a tendency to try to do things all the time like that. And Hagan has made a couple of ill-advised pitches here this afternoon that, frankly, he's been very lucky Missouri did not recover. That time, looking for the home run play after a lengthy game, it was a forward pitch, and CU has to line up, but they also lose it down. So instead of first down and a big gain, it's second and two. Hagan overthrows Charles Johnson. Johnson, the sophomore out of San Bernardino. Also a trackster here at CU. Darian Hagan not very happy with himself. These kids are happy. Their buffs are up 17 to nothing. It's a great day. Hey, you suck. Get out of here. Get out. There's no school. Doesn't get any better than that. Third and two. This is call. Stopped at the 40. Picks up first down yardage. Oh, I don't know. It'll be close. Shouldn't have spoken too soon. In fact, it doesn't look like the mark is going to go in the Buffs' favor. He might be about a half foot short. Yeah, I think a great defensive play that time by the Tigers. His call looked like he was going to amble past that 40-yard line. And he got necktied and thrown back. I did speak a little too soon. CU brings the punting unit on. Mitch Berger, the punter. And Maurice Benson will return. Ten minutes to go in the first half. Berger gets one off, end over end. A nice angle, and it goes out of bounds at the ten and a half yard line. Quite a kick by Berger. He's got to be happy with that one. Fifty yards and no return. And Missouri is pinned back at its own 10. Well, they've been staring at 80 and 90 yards downfield all day. Kicking games can mean so much to defensive teams. If your kickoff team puts the opponent in the hole, you've got a lot of territory to work with. And conversely, if your punt team can do what Mitch Berger did just there, Pretty strange. Intensity-wise, really emotionally gets you back into that game and turns it up a notch or two. Well, the Broncos found that out against Houston last week, didn't they? A blocked punt and a blocked field goal. And Houston annihilated it as a result. Missouri has little success running it as they've had passing it. Cahill stopped for a gain of one. Bill Johnson has had some pretty good games this year. 297 yards passing against Illinois, 296 yards passing against a very tough Baylor team. Second and nine. Johnson, nowhere near the intended receiver, Kenny Hollett. Again, good pressure from the Buffs, and you can tell Johnson heard the footsteps from Joel Steed. Joel Steed coming off a concussion last week that he suffered at practice. Looks like his head is on straight this week. You know how hard practice was when your nose guard gets a concussion. Joel Steed, about 280 pounds. You don't want to see him get knocked down too much. See Miami. Is that right, second quarter? No, it's a fourth quarter score now. Miami leads Penn State 26 to 20. Pretty good game. Third and nine for the Tigers. They'll run the ball, but not very far. Okay, Hill brought down by Chad Brown and Greg Baker. The Buffs leading tacklers. And once again, Missouri will punt. Well, it looked like that time, Dave, they just gave up. They said, we've got a long way to go. We're not going to make it. We'll run it up the middle and get rid of the ball. Well, they had Colorado in a nickel defense, and what they tried to do was spring Cahill, Cahill through the middle, hoping that they'd get some man-to-man -man coverage and he might be able to pick up the first down, but it didn't work. Mark Plunkett having a punt from his own end zone. Hagan will receive a nice, nice punt by Plunkett. Hagan at his own 36 and gets it up to his own 48. There's a penalty flag down. A 49-yard kick. And about a 12-yard return. Looks 
Well, the call is going to go against the Buffs. Actually, why don't you go ahead and go? Boy, Hagen was really hit hard at the end of that run back. But he's staying on the field and he'll quarterback. Clip during the return, 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. That pushes the ball back to the 33-yard line. And we're going to take a break at Folsom Field. Bill McCartney pointing out that his Buffs lead 17 to nothing. A little trombone music on homecoming day. Colorado leading the Tigers of Mizzou 17 to nothing. 8.27 to go in the first half. Buffs have the ball on their own 33. Just received a punt. So it's first down. Two wide outs in there for the Buffs. Mark Henry on the top part of your screen and Charles Johnson below. And Hagen runs the option to call. Hit by three Tigers, spins away up to the 39-yard line, a gain of six. Ken Call so far this year with 186 yards rushing. He averages 4.2 yards a carry. And he's the Buffs' leading scorer with four touchdowns this year. Take a look, Darian Hagen makes this work. There's the pitch man. You see the penetration by the defensive end. That's John Watkins, and Call, once he turns upfield, once he squares the shoulders, it's fairly difficult to knock off his feet. There's something unusual. Sean Brown, the tight end, lined up wide right. Doesn't matter. They go up the middle to James Hill. John Watkins once again on the tackle. And Hill gets the first down for the Buffs. Hill's running very well this year despite a chronic ankle problem. Well, you can hardly tell. Tough young man. First and ten from their own 44. This is Call. With some fine blocking, gets it across midfield, down to the Mizzou 47. Darrell Major, the linebacker from St. Louis, the tackle. Well, we just talked about James Hill, the fullback. Don't watch the ball this time. Watch the fullback. Watch number 33 as he leads Kent Call right through the hole. There. Now, that's Call knocking folks down as James Hill got in the legs of Tom Reiner, the linebacker. And that's what you have to have. You've got to have a fullback that will knock people down, knock them off their feet. And James Hill, an excellent blocker. Second and one for the Buffs. Hagan gets the first down inside the 45. Sharon Washington, the free safety, makes the tackle. He's Missouri's leading tackler with 13 and a half a game. Has good genes. His dad, Benny Washington, played for the Houston Oilers. Well, he's going to get to know Darian Hagan quite well here this afternoon. Most times in option football, the free safety is assigned to the quarterback. Not in every scheme, but in a lot of them. And that time, Sharon Washington saved a big game. Buffs running at will. Big chunks of yardage. It's first and 10 from the Mizzou 44. This is Call again. This time, he can't get away from Washington. Brought down right around the line of scrimmage. Here's a score from around the Big 8. Nebraska playing at Oklahoma State, and the Huskers with a quick start. 14 to nothing lead in the first quarter. A few other games around the Big 8 today. Kansas is at Kansas State. They're hitting the rivalry early in the schedule this year. And Oklahoma is at Texas. Iowa State has the weekend off. 5.37 to go. Buffs with a second and nine. Hagen goes deep. Complete to Robbie James, who we felt would get a lot of playing time today with Rico Smith not in the ball game because of an ankle injury. I'll tell you, this thing had to be right on the money because Robbie James with Jason Oliver very close to him. There's not a lot of room to fit this football in. James with the comeback. Look at the coverage by Oliver. 
Pretty good. Nice throw by Darian Hagan and Robbie James. Got both feet in bounds. And they had to stop the game and give him the ball because in three years here, Robbie James has not caught a pass. That's his first reception as a CU Buff. And it gives the Buffs a first down from the 32. James Hill, head down across the 30. Brought down by Maurice Benson, who felt the brunt of Hill's helmet. Also on the tackle, Travis McDonald. Frustrated Missouri Tiger team, down 17 to nothing. Less than five minutes to go in the half. Second and five for CU. Hagan keeps. You know what I never understood, Dave? Why do you run the option to the short side of the field? What's the reason? Because more times than not, defensively, you will have that extra man to the wide side, expecting a team to, to run the option to the wide side. And you can sometimes outman, outnumber your opponent by taking that option weak side. My point is, it always looks so congested. If you're not running into one of the defenders, you're running into one of your own men. Well, obviously, it's tough to make the pitch to the short side. But you can sometimes squeeze that quarterback into that lane and get big yards. Well, we measured for the first down, and the Buffs have it on the Missouri 21-yard line. Quite probably with the senior quarterback, Darian Hagan audibleizes quite a bit at the line of scrimmage, more than likely realized that Missouri was going to be outmanned weak side and changed that last play. Buffs with a new look, two running backs. Hagan on play action. Complete to a wide open Charles Johnson at the 10-yard line, and he's gang tackled. He's thrown back a couple of yards, but he'll get a pretty good placement. Down almost to the 10-yard line. Two nice adjustments here. Watch Darian Hagan step back inside and buy himself some time. This move right there enables him to throw the ball. And Charles Johnson, instead of running all the way across the field, stopped, hooked up, and found himself the opening for Darian Hagan to find him. That's CJ's second reception on the day. Sophomore out of San Bernardino. The scoreboard <laughs> looking a little odd. First and 10 from the 11. Hagan, wide open, touchdown, Sean Brown. John Brown lined up the right side of the screen. The play action off the option will allow the linebackers or allow Brown to get behind the linebackers. And again, that's what happens when you're so successful running the football. Defenses have to react to what they see initially, and they got sucked up inside. The extra point by Harper is good. And the Buffs. Looking like a route in progress, 24 to nothing over Mizzou. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan, 4-0-3 to go in the first half. The Buffs, very comfortable lead over the Missouri Tigers, 24 to nothing. Mitch Berger kicking off. And Jerome Madison fields the pop-up, but there will not be a return. That last scoring drive went 10 plays, 67 yards for CU. They add up almost four and a half minutes, culminating in a Darian Hagan to Sean Brown touchdown pass. That's the second touchdown pass Sean Brown has caught this year. A look at Bob Stull in his third year at Mizzou. He's got a record of 8, 17, and 1. About to become, it looks like, 8, 18, and 1. Johnson, the dump-off pass to Ron L. Cahill. First down yardage across the 30 to about the 33. Ronnie Bradford ran him down, along with Ted Johnson. Ted Johnson, in the last couple weeks in practice, actually earned the start in a middle linebacker spot. But he had a family member die, and he went back home for the funeral. So John Knutson retained the starting spot, the freshman out of Great Falls, Montana. But Ted Johnson getting a lot of work today. 
First down from their own 32. Johnson falls back into the shotgun. Again, they dump it off to Cahill. Missouri going to the short passing game. Fumble. There's a pile. And the officials quickly call it still Missouri ball. And they're across midfield. It's their furthest penetration into CU territory all day. Well designed play again in the shotgun. Cahill counts one second, two second, drifts to the outside. The ball will pop loose, and it looked like Dion Figures, number two, had a great shot at it. Just had to go right past it. And Kenny Holly, I think, came away with the recovery. Well, Missouri with a little momentum now. Let's see how far they can take it. The first time all day in CU territory at the Buffs 49 yard line. Good pressure. Johnson gets it off incomplete. The pressure came from Johnson, the linebacker. And a yellow flag down. Ronnie Wolfer got there about a second too soon. That's going to be pass interference. Pass interference on the defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. Well, you are just amazing today. I think you've had every call correct. Well, I tell you, that, that's an obvious call. Ronnie Wolford, it's tough to hold up as a linebacker once you draw a bead on a receiver. And you're going to go get him. If anything happens to throw the timing of the play off a little bit, you're usually caught, and in that case, caught with the yellow flag. Boy, the linebackers hate that, don't they? They want to defend against that run all day long and butt helmets. And when you make them cover a guy coming out of the backfield, it's not their forte, at least not most linebackers. They'd rather play the rock em, sock em game than have, than have to handle a guy who runs a 4-5-40 to their 4-8. First and 10 still for Missouri from the Buffs 47. Michael Washington. Gets it back to about the line of scrimmage. Chad Brown, the junior, with the tackle. See, that's where you need that running game. You're moving the ball a little bit. Nice short passing game. You put a screen in there. That works. And then you need to pop that play for seven or eight yards to keep generating the momentum for the offense, which come up now second and ten, and you're back in the hole. Less than two and a half minutes to go, first half. Good pressure again. Johnson on the run. Not a good pass, incomplete. Greg Thomas thought he had the interception. The official thought the ball bounced off the turf into his hands. I'd like to get another look at that one. Colorado doing a better job that time of disguising the blitz. They will bring seven men after Phil Johnson. And Johnson, again, with terrific mobility, eludes the rush. Well, I think that may have been a valid catch. Tough to see from that angle. Phil Johnson picks up a low snap, realizes that he's got problems. There's Greg Beekert. And also Eric Hamilton, number six from the free safety spot. The pass away from the impossible to see from that angle. Third down, the Tigers. Yeah, Eric Hamilton is the man who made Missouri botch that play with the pressure he put on Johnson. This time, Johnson intended to run and does. Inside the 45, call it a gain of three, but it'll be fourth down for Mizzou. Greg Beekert, the tackle. Let's see what the Tigers do here. Good chance they'll go for it. Well, I'll tell you, fourth and six, or fourth and eight. I think it's right in between. I think it's fourth you, and you, seven. You give up field position here, and Colorado goes down and scores. You're pretty much out of the game. This is, in my mind, a big gamble if they go for it by Bob Stoll. But what do you have to lose, Dave? You're down 24 to nothing. Well, you got you got plenty to lose. If you go down 31 to nothing at halftime and give up a score like this, a cheap score at midfield. Uh, I think you lose the kids. You punt the ball, you're down 24 to nothing. Now, if they succeed here, of course, he looks like a genius. But I think you got plenty to lose here. You're 24 to nothing down. And that at least keeps you in sight, although they haven't played very well. Well, it looks like Missouri will not go for it. They 
took a delay of game penalty. And right now there's nobody on the field for Missouri. And they do bring on the punting unit. See, I know Missouri fans are going to question this, but I think this is the correct call by Bob Stoll. It's not fourth and one or fourth and two. It's fourth and seven. And you're virtually at midfield. You miss it here and give Colorado a short field to work with and a minute and 30 to go, you're out of the game. Missouri took its time making that decision. The five yards being pushed back does not hurt them as a result of the penalty. Plunkett, the punter, is in. Hagen is back to receive it for CU back at his own 10-yard line. And although different circumstances, just ask Hayden Fry about going for it late in the first half. A fake punt on fourth and nine. Michigan stops them. They go down and score. And from that point on, it was all Michigan in Iowa City. Plunkett booms it into the end zone. A punt of 51 yards. And the Buffs will have a minute, nine seconds to work with, starting with it at their own 20-yard line. CU leading 24 to nothing. Another sellout here at Folsom Field. Every game this year sold out except for the Kansas game in early November. So if you want a chance to see the Buffs, the black and gold, how they look this year, and you don't want to watch it on TV, there are still a few tickets up for grabs here for the game against Kansas. Darian Hagan, a quarterback for the Buffs. And the Buffs are going for blood. Deep to Eric Mitchell, the speedster. Just out of his reach at the 25-yard line. Hagan really had a whip on that ball. By Eric Mitchell, possibly the fastest man on this team. He runs under a 4-3-40. Darian Hagan made up his mind he was going to let this thing go. Now watch where it takes off about the 17 18 yard line and it lands at about the 18 yard line wow that's in, 64 in, yards in the air that's right 101 to go this time the buffs stay conservative go up the middle to james hill and he gets four four and a half yards Bill McCartney had said Darian Hagan's arm looked like the life had come back to it this week. I would say based on that throw, he's right. It'll be third and six. 30 seconds left in the first half. A very nice first half for the Buffs. Hagan escapes one tackler, hits the sideline across midfield. If he can get by a couple men here, he's in, down at the 40-yard line. With 10 seconds to go, do they run one more play, try to get it in the field goal position? Well, I would call timeout. The clock will be stopped as they move the yard markers. Colorado's called timeout. Hagan just eludes Stacy Elliott in the backfield, and then this is just his God-given ability. Darian Hagan makes a nice cut back inside, runs out of gas a little bit right here, and I think also realizes that the clock was going to run down. But you've got time for another play. You want to try to get, obviously, a few more yards toward the end zone. Colorado, by the way, does not have any more timeouts. So with that in mind, if you're going to run another play, it has to be toward the boundary on either side to get out of bounds. Well, if you're wondering, Jim Harper, the Buffs field goal specialist, has a long kick of 50 yards this year. Right now, they're at the 41-yard line of Mizzou. You knew he was going to be a great player when you first saw him as a freshman here in Boulder from Lock High School in Los Angeles. He just had that extra something that great option quarterbacks all seem to have. 
All right, let's see how the Buffs work it. Eating up a lot of time right here. Hagan almost intercepted by Brad Scribner with two seconds left. In that case, Colorado lucky the ball was knocked down because had it been caught, time would have expired in the first half. Yeah, but it's a black mark on Hagen's record. I think he'd rather go without the interception. Mitch Berger will attempt a field goal. Harper normally kicks it, but this one is very, very long. 48, it's at the 48-yard line. It's about a 65-yard attempt. And well short. So at the half, the Buffs with a 24 to nothing lead over Missouri on homecoming day. The Buffs go off the field with a number of high fives. The beginning of the conference schedule and it's a very fine beginning so far. One half against Missouri has quickly wiped out any remembrance of the fifth down controversy last year. Missouri feeling it should have won that game. The Buffs telling him right now, no shot today. Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh. And, and kept him alive. And Thank you, Les. We're going to listen in on Coach Stoll's comments. He's moved the ball. We only had one first down until that last drive. What is uh, Colorado doing defensively that's giving you all the trouble? Well, we're just not executing very well. We had some uh, breakdowns, and uh, and we're just not getting any yardage on the running game at all and, and not executing the pass very well. You're not running as much. Is that because Michael and Ronell are somewhat banged up? Well, they're banged up, but, you know, we haven't. You know, we got, haven't gotten more than three plays at a time until that last drive. So, you know, when it's second and ten, you, you know, you're more out the floor than you are the All right, thanks a lot, Bob. Coach Bob Stuhl of the Missouri Tigers, his team struggling offensively here in the first half. They trail it 24 to nothing. Last back up. Thanks, Mark. The CU marching band immediately takes the field. It's 100th year of performing at halftime of CU football games. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back at Folsom. Some of the things that make the CU campus so attractive to so many students, about 25,000 students. <clears throat> Halftime at CU, the Buffs lead it 24 to nothing. Go Tigers? Well, they haven't gone very far so far. We'll take a look at stats in a second. Right now, we're waiting for the Buffs and Ralphie to come back onto the field. first-half highlights of this 24 to nothing game. Well, Colorado offensively got off to a great start. Here, the first touchdown of the game, Darian Hagan and Michael Westbrook. Westbrook on man-to-man -man coverage finds the open seam. They came back. They've dominated the game. Here's James Hill going for the second CU score. But Darian Hagan once again off the play action. The option game really changes what you try to do defensively. You got to get a lot of bodies involved in stopping the running game. And when you do, Sean Brown is able to slip behind you for the touchdown catch. Look at how dominant CU is. I think the one stat that Bill McCartney would like to see the most, maybe a couple, but certainly 228 yards rushing. Colorado had just not been able to get into the running game in the first four games, not the way McCartney wanted. Plus, you look at the total yards given up by the CU defense, 71. And that's against a fair to Midland Missouri offense. This is not an offense that rivals Florida State or Miami, but it's certainly better than some of the teams CU will face this year. Hey, how bad it is for Mizzou. Not just 72 yards total offense, but they haven't even had a chance to return a punt or a kickoff as much as CU has kicked off this afternoon. They're not getting anywhere. 
And it's quite a turnaround from two weeks ago when against Stanford, CU gave up 100 yards plus rushing to two different Cardinal runners, Milburn and Vardell. So the two weeks of tough practice have gone well for CU and translated to a very fine afternoon here on defense. Keep in mind, if you're Bob Stahl, aside from telling your club what you think of their performance in the first half, you want to stress to Missouri that Colorado has been in front at halftime in all four games. And obviously, they surrendered that lead in two of the four. So Missouri, on this first possession, wants to get something going offensively. The strength of their team, they can go down and score and get it into the end zone. You see a couple of guys are at least excited to have a chance to catch it. Maybe they turn things around. That was Jason Oliver and Skip Leach trying to charge each other up. They'll be receiving the kickoff for Mitch Berger. Oliver, about eight yards deep, does the prudent thing. Knee goes down. Berger with another good kickoff. Once again, Missouri starts from the 20 list. Their best field position so far. Bob Stowe with a few more gray hairs after that first half. It's going to take a while to build this program back. It's been down for a few years now. Phil Johnson, the quarterback for Missouri. He'll come out winging it. Cahill. That brought the U's and Oz from the crowd. You'll see Cahill on the right side of your screen trying to block Chad Brown. Well, you won't see it. What you will see is Cahill getting decked by Ronnie Bradford. A zone defense. Cahill runs right to the corner, and there awaits Mr. Bradford. Bradford out of Adams City High School in Commerce City, a sociology major. Second and seven for Mizzou. Johnson with some time. Finds Skip Leach. Across midfield, down to the bus 45-yard line. Our flag is down. Phil Johnson with a nice fake. Right off the snap, bought himself some time and found Skip Leach downfield. 33-yard gain. Completed pass, inadvertent face mask, five yards from the end of the run, first down. I thought Colorado defensively lined up improperly here. Skip Leach, we can't see him, but Dion figures his man-to-man -man on the wide side of the field with no help and gave Leach about 10 yards. Leach took him to the post, then back to the flag. That's a very difficult route to cover when you give up that much room. And inadvertent face mask penalty, just five yards, as opposed to an intentional face mask, which would be more yardage. First and ten for Missouri on the CU 40-yard line. Johnson, complete. A nice catch by Kenny Holley. Went high in the air to grab that one. And he is inside the Buffs 30. We've talked about Phil Johnson and his arm when the play action fit. Sets up tall in the pocket. Rifles the ball in. Holly makes a nice catch, and Missouri is doing exactly what they had to do. Dangerous pass. Second half. Excuse me, Dave. Dangerous pass. Three buffs surrounding Kenny Holly. And a nice acrobatic catch. First and ten at the buffs 28. This is Washington. Down to the 26. Beekert and Chad Brown, the two linebackers, make the stop. says to get this program back on its feet, he wants to pass the ball for a number of reasons. Number one, a lot of Big 8 teams aren't used to defending against the pass, not very well anyway. And passing the ball is attractive to recruits. you got to get the recruits in if you want to build the program back. And then once the program is built back, get a few top-notch running backs, and you're back on top. Good pressure. Complete the Cahill. The pressure 
came from Leonard Renfro, but Johnson was still able to get the pass off. And Missouri looking a little more charged up here, Dave. Good pressure by the CU defense. Johnson does a nice job of just realizing he's got someone in his face. His back is to Renfro. Gets the pass off. That's actually Joel Steed. That is Renfro. A nice catch by Cahill, and Eric Hamilton realizes he's got that coverage from the middle of the field, the free safety. On the blitz, he's got the back out of the backfield. He's got a good running start. Third and six, Missouri has three wide receivers lined up to the left of quarterback Phil Johnson, and one on top of your screen, so four wideouts. And he dumps the ball off to Cahill. Good defensive play by Greg Thomas to bring up a fourth down situation for Mizzou. But Mike Badowski, the offensive right tackle, right left guard, excuse me, had a chance to block Thomas. Had he got the block, that was going to go for big yardage. But a good job by Greg Thomas on the screen. And for the first time all day, we're going to see Missouri attempt a field goal. Jeff Jackie in the ball game. He is perfect on the year. He's three for three. And this attempt will be 44 yards. It's long enough. But it's wide left. Jeff Jackie and Mizzou missed the field goal attempt. So CU preserves the shutout. It's still 24 to nothing early in the second half. Mizzou's best shot so far today at putting some points on the board. Let's go down to the field right now. Something from Mark McIntosh. Yeah, thanks, Les. You notice the Buzz came out with a lot of intensity there in the second half. At halftime, McCartney said, hey, guys, I want you to act like it's nothing to nothing. Keep it up. He was very happy with the first half play, but he wants to see the same intensity, and so far we've seen it. Back up to you guys. Well, it's the same quarterback in for the Buffs. Darian Hagan gives to the first man through James Hill, and Hill gets it up to the 31. Call it a gain of four. We've got a huge upset in college football. We'll show you in just a minute. That's not it. Miami beats Penn State 26 to 20. First and 10 for the Buffs. Hagan keeps it, then pitches. That time, good timing on the pitch, a clean pitch. And Lamont Warren gets it up to the 44-yard line. Well, Hagan's got a little Eva Knievel in it, and we've seen it over the years. Stretches the defense. You run to the perimeter as far as you can just as you're going down. He takes the ball in his right hand and flings it toward Lamont Warren, and that results in a big play. As a freshman, you just keep running. Stretch that defense, and you'll get the pitch eventually from that guy. I think by the time his career is over here, Hagan's going to have as many broken bones as Evil Knievel, too. First down from their own 45. Hagan again. This time keeps it all the way. And a penalty flag on the play. Hagan got it inside the Missouri 45. I don't think that'll be an inadvertent face mask. I think that might be the big one. I'm still waiting to find out. Five yards, into the run, first down. Hagan again stretches the defense. You'll see the face mask. This time, it's used to make the tackle. That is only an inadvertent call. Travis McDonald, 200-pound freshman linebacker, with the face mask. Looks fairly intentional to me. I'm still waiting to hear about this upset. We'll tell you right after this play. Next. Okay. I don't know if I can wait that long. First and 10 at the Missouri 39. Lamont Warren again. Finds a little room to the outside, inside the 35 yard line. Call it a gain of five. All right, here you go. How about this one for an upset? And a team that's familiar Whoa. in these parts. Rice beats the number eight ranked team in the country, the Baylor Bears, 20 to 17. That might be, after the year is done, the biggest upset in college football this year. In Waco, Texas, Baylor in the top 10 this week beat Mizzou, beat CU, was undefeated coming into this weekend play. 
Second and five for the Buffs. The pitch to Warren. Can he get it outside? Yes. One man to beat. Driven down at the six-yard line. Lamont Warren showing a few moves. Not bad for a freshman. Maurice Benson finally makes the tackle. A 28-yard run. Well, Lamont Warren, again, gives you the swivel hip, the quick pitch. Warren there. Now watch him make a couple of Tigers miss. Just runs right through the arm tackles. And a 190-pound freshman is having himself quite a day. In option football, sometimes you're going to be able to defense it, but you just can't make the tackle. That time, Missouri in perfect position, but unable to bring him down. So the Buffs with a first and goal from the six-yard line. James Hill gets it. The fullback inside the five. Gain of two. Bob Stoll very, very worried right now. A score here could put this game out of reach for the Tigers. It's 24 to nothing CU. Under nine minutes to go in the third quarter. This is what you don't want to see if you're Missouri in your conference opener because it can make for a very long conference schedule from here on out. Hagan wants to do it himself. Doesn't get the blocking, however, and he's thrown for a couple yard loss. Maurice Benson right there has been a very busy man today because he's the man who is keying on Hagen, and Hagen's been keeping the ball quite a bit. In fact, in the first half, Hagen alone had 92 yards rushing. So it's third and goal from the seventh. Hagen into the end zone. Oh! Sean Emery, the tight end out of Cherry Creek High School. I think that ball was tipped before it ever got to him. You never know as a receiver when he's running around back there exactly as to where he's throwing the ball. The ball was deflected right at the goal line. It looked like Travis McDonald may have got his right hand on it. And Emery just couldn't react quickly. enough. Missouri takes a timeout here. This is a very key series for them. They have got to keep CU out of the end zone, or you'll be looking at a 31 to nothing lead. We'll be right back. CU lining up for a field goal. This is a 24-yard attempt by Jim Harper. Mark Henry on the hold. Kick is good. So CU ups its lead to 27 zip. Little by little, chiseling away at the Missouri Tigers. Crowd enjoying this one. It's homecoming at, ha at uh, halftime. We were introduced to the homecoming King and Queen and their courts. Missouri Tigers trying to get their act together. Here's your score from South Bend, Indiana. Notre Dame doing a number on the Pitt Panthers, 35 to 7. They're in the fourth quarter. And Nebraska putting the hurt on Oklahoma State. In Stillwater, 21 to 3, the Huskers, and they're only in the second quarter. The other Big Eight game has Oklahoma at Texas today. Oklahoma, of course, in the Big Eight, Texas in the Southwest Conference, and Oklahoma leads that one 7 to nothing in Dallas. Some other local teams in action today. Air Force is at Navy. CSU has the day off, and Wyoming is hosting Utah. Jerome Madison.
Davis in, and Skip Leach will field the kickoff for Berger. Well, no, they won't, because that one, once again, went out of the end zone. 8.25 to go in the third quarter here at Folsom. The Buffs lead it 27 to nothing. A lot of the fans finding this a good time to go to the concession stand. The game seems to be well in hand. Phil Johnson struggling today. He is 8 for 14. 85 yards. Most of those yards have come here in the third quarter. Crossing pattern intercepted. The Buffs intercept. That's Ted Johnson, the freshman out of Vista, California. A great one-handed grab. Well, you talk about an outstanding play by a freshman. The inside linebacker first has to read the run. Then after he determines it's a pass, he'll get depth. Number 46, the right side of your screen, sticks his left hand out. That's a play you don't see made many times at any level. Ted Johnson with a great interception. Got into the passing lane, read the quarterback's eyes, but the thing about this, look at the catch. That's a catch receivers don't make often. CU making a change at quarterback. Vance Joseph is back in the game for Darian Hagan. The Buffs with the ball at the Mizzou 27. The pitch to Warren. He's wrestled to the ground at the 29, a loss of two yards. Daryl Major with a major tackle. I think Darian Hagan's okay. You want to get your second team quarterback as much playing time as you can, quality playing time. You see Air Force ahead of Navy, 17-6 in the third. Because in option football, your quarterback takes a lot of shots, and Hagan's been banged up much of the year. This man right here might be the guy down the stretch that is called upon at a crucial time. The give to Warren. Turns the corner. And run out of bounds at the Missouri 12-yard line. That's a first down. Brad Scribner gave him a push outside the white line. You'll find a lot of freshmen that come into college football with great physical abilities. But few that I've seen have the ability to set people up and be patient as he runs. He's such a smooth runner. And that time did an excellent job of darting in and out behind blockers. You don't see that a lot from 18-year-olds. First down at the Missouri 12-yard line. The Buffs trying to put the Tigers away here. Looks like a mix-up on the play. Joseph keeps it. Gets a few yards out of it. Inside the 10. Down to the 7. Call it a gain of 5. Vance Joseph's walking back to the huddle saying, hey, I cha he changed the play at the line of scrimmage. All right, I'll handle it to Hey! He changed the play, and everybody must have uh, not hurt him because Vance turned around and handed to nobody. Decided to keep it and picked up some yards. And we're told Joseph is in the game because Darian Hagan is getting a rest. Plain and simple. Buffs have two players who have gone over the 100-yard mark today rushing. Hagan has 101, and Lamont Warren has 112. Second and five. This is Warren again. Pulls his way down to the two-yard line. Flag on the field. Take a look at the left side of your uh, screen. Roger Ivey at left guard gets a handful of jersey that time. I think he's blocking Mario Johnson, and that's where the flag came in. Roger Ivey, the senior out of Loveland, Ohio. One of two buffs married. So it'll be second down for the Buffs. And when they have two players rushing for 100 yards plus, like Lamont Warren and Darian Hagan have today, the Buffs are undefeated. Second and 13. Joseph keeps it. He'll be in. See you touchdown. Well, speed is nice. 
in the option, but quickness is essential. And you'll see Vance Joseph ride that fullback. He realizes right there he's got to keep the ball. And look at the quickness he exhibits getting into that end zone. He dropped the football, and initially I thought he was well into the end zone, but that was close. The extra point by Harper is good. And the Buffs have themselves a 34 to nothing lead. We'll be right back at Folsom. There's the man who just scored the CU touchdown. Backup quarterback Vance Joseph on a 13-yard run. Mitch Berger kicking off for CU. And back to receive it, Jerome Madison and Skip Leach. Berger with another boomer, and Madison decides not to run it out. We mentioned on the last touchdown run by Vance Joseph that it was close when he let this ball go. Good job of riding the fullback. Now watch as he crosses the goal line. There, now he's in the end zone. It was close, but he's in the end zone. Had that been rolled a fumble, Missouri would have had the ball on their 20-yard line. Four plays, 27 yards, less than two minutes, and Vance Joseph from 15 yards for the TD. First and 10 for Mizzou at the 20. The quarterback is still Phil Johnson. And the running back right there is still Ron L. K. Hill. And he still can't get any yardage. Maybe one. Back the whole Missouri offense has been very still. All afternoon. You saw a study in contrast right there. A bunch of Buffs fans enjoying the afternoon, followed by Bob Stull, who's not enjoying one bit of it, the coach of the Missouri Tigers. Second and ten for Mizzou. Phil Johnson complete to Kay Hill. He is whomped. And then three more Buffs bring him down at the 25. The initial hit was made by Greg Thomas, and that slowed down Kay Hill enough so that his teammates can come up over and close out the play. Again, see you in the base defense. Cahill will catch the ball. Thomas sits and waits. Didn't wrap him up. Gave him a pretty good jolt. Missouri's just not been able to throw the ball downfield. A couple of things. Secondary has disguised their coverages, and the pass rush has prevented Phil Johnson from having a lot of time. It's third and six. 5.15 to go in the third quarter. Johnson overthrows Cahill with another good rush from Chad Brown and Ronnie Wolfork, the two outside linebackers. They've done a great job this year filling in for the two All-Americans who left, who graduated. Canavis McGee and Alfred Williams both playing in the pros this year. McGee with the New York Giants and Alfred Williams for the Cincinnati Bengals. Mizzou will punt the ball, plunk it, will punt it, and Chris Hudson will return it for the Buffs. Hudson from his own 33. Dances his way across the 45 up to the 48. So the Buffs with a 34 to nothing lead. Five minutes to go in the third quarter. That punt by Plunkett was 43 yards. The return by Hudson, 15. Boy, it must be nice to know for the Buffs special teams coaches that they've got Chris Hudson, Darian Hagan, and Rico Smith who can all return a punt and all have the capability to break the long one. Vance Joseph still at quarterback for the Buffs. Kent Call back in the game and running back, and he gets the call across midfield down to the Missouri 49-yard line. Tim Burke, the tackle. You've seen Bill McCartney in the first four games alternate Kent Call and Lamont Warren. Warren's had an outstanding afternoon here so far. We also want Kent Call to get in the game and have a chance to show what he can do. McCartney has said that he doesn't necessarily have to have one of those kids playing the starting role. He's happy playing both. 
You know what's nice about this team? They use everybody. They give it to three, four different running backs. They throw to three, four, five different receivers. Everybody stays fresh all year long. Vance Joseph down to the Mizzou 45. Call it a gain of four. Major and McDonald, the tackles. Speaking of spreading it around, the Buffs have a new fullback in the ballgame. If you take a look at Daryl Major of Missouri, the new fullback in the game is Tony Senna, the senior from San Antonio. A special team standout. Maybe he'll get a carry or two today. That's Kent Cole on this play. Stays on his feet. Stopped and stood upright at the 35-yard line by Maurice Benson. Well, speaking of Tony Zinna, he leads Kent Call right through the hole. The lead, and when you run this play, you've got to have a fullback that roots out those linebackers. Tough to see, but Call breaks in the secondary and picks up more yardage. Enough for a first down. Joseph to the air, deep. Wide open, Westbrook. Can he get in? Yes! Caught it at about the two, and then just stepped his way through a defender into the end zone. His second touchdown catch of the day. Well, I don't think we're going to see the dogs called off here this afternoon for obvious reasons. Play action fake. Westbrook right up the seam. There's a wide receiver who runs a comeback to the top side of the screen. That draws the corner. The ball took forever. Westbrook said, all right, <laughs> on a step into the end zone, and the Buffs have their 40th point. A very casual Michael Westbrook. The extra point is good. And the score balloons to 41 to nothing, CU's favor. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Dave Logan and Wilson Field. Dave, you think Colorado is giving a little shot to the ribs here, going to the air with a 34 to nothing lead? Well, I don't think, based on what happened last year, that either coach, if they got ahead, would pull the reins in a bit. I think you'll see Colorado still be aggressive offensively, and this will heighten the relationship between the two teams and the excitement that you'll see in the next few years. Once again, no return for Missouri on the kickoff. Let's take a look at that last touchdown. Michael Westbrook, again, is a great talent, a redshirt freshman out of Detroit. Vance Joseph kind of throws this thing up, and Westbrook has to wait for it to come down. You see linebackers, and you've seen linebackers chasing Westbrook most of the day. In that particular case, it was Kent Gardner, the outside backer. They've been able to isolate Westbrook on linebackers all day. Four plays, 52 yards, a minute and 38 seconds it took them. And now we'll see what Missouri can do. I think CU's game plan, both offensively and defensively, uh, it's the best we've seen this year. Westbrook with a touchdown catch against Stanford two weeks ago and two more today. Bill Johnson on that out pattern has Skip Leach at the 25-yard line. A gain of five. Greg Thomas, the defender. Skip Leach was a quarterback, formerly. Now shifted to wide receiver, so he's got that I'll make you miss mentality. Didn't particularly work there, but he's a good athlete. Hey, what impressed me in his bio, in four years of high school, he never missed a day. Perfect attendance. That time the pass is incomplete, intended for Jerome Madison. You look out and you're seeing a lot of guys that you're familiar with if you're a CU fan. Wolf work, there's Bickert near screen. First team defense. And I think you'll see the first team defense stay in the game well into the fourth quarter. Bill McCartney would like to get this shut up. Sending a message to Mizzou after last year's controversial fifth down game. Missouri with a third and five situation on its own 25 yard line. Four wideouts. And Phil Johnson falls back into the shotgun. Boy, that field is spread out. Look at that picture. Penalty flags. Well, 
This almost looks like a game you'd play in intramurals. Everybody go Delay, deep. Five yards, repeat third down. Yeah, but the good thing in intramurals, you can always quit. You can <laughs> just go in. We've got another quarter left. You see Oklahoma leading Texas in Dallas, 7-0. Sooners are unbeaten. Texas looking for their first win of the year. Yeah, but it doesn't matter in that rivalry. It really doesn't. No matter the disparity between the two teams, Texas always plays its best game of the year against its heated rival, Oklahoma. 2.37 to go in the third quarter. Missouri with a third and ten, and Johnson keeps it. Fumble. CU has the ball. Chad Brown brought down at the 20-yard line. The Buffs just keeps sticking it to him. much of the afternoon it's fixing to get real ugly Johnson this is a called keeper gets hit by Hamilton and Joel Steed from behind Chad Brown realizes the ball is loose picks it up and then thinks about turning it into a running back Chad Brown the junior out of Altadena California sociology major played inside linebacker last year because McGee and Williams had a stranglehold on the outside spots, but now he's been switched to the outside and doing very well. Vance Joseph brought down at the 15-yard line, a gain of five on a play that didn't look like it was going anywhere, but Joseph squeaked five yards out of it. I'll tell you, Sharon Washington is walking back to the Missouri huddle with his hands on his hips. Eric Mitchell cracked back from the outside and almost decapitated Washington. Mitchell's about 160 pounds, but when you don't see him coming, it feels like 260. Take a look at the top of the screen. Bam! Oh, Sharon Washington. For what I'm laughing at. That's not funny. <laughs> really took one from the diminutive Mitchell. Second and five for the Buffs. Reverse. There's Eric Mitchell. He's in. Touchdown, CU. The Buffs don't care that they're up 41 to nothing. They're still throwing the trick plays at Mizzou. Mitchell is the fastest CU player. They've timed him at 4-2-5. And once he catches the football, he could have literally walked into the end zone. We've got an injured Missouri player. That's Lance Knoll, I believe, the outside linebacker. Got to find ways to get the football into Eric Mitchell's hands. Well, as Jimmy Durante said, everybody wants to get into the act today, and everybody has. Check that. It's John Watkins, the defensive end for the Tigers. Well, I don't blame him for wanting to come off the field, whether he's injured or not. This extra point will make it 48 to nothing if it's successful. And Pat Pluto is kicking it for the first time today for the Buffs. Blue Toe got a lot of action for the Buffs last year as their place kicker. This year, not much with Jim Harper doing most of the duty. Blue Toe, a pretty good kicker, though. Barefooted, puts it through. And it is CU 48 and Missouri nothing with a minute 41 still to go in the third quarter. If you're into point spreads, the game opened up. A 15-point advantage in CU's favor, and it shot up to 18 when the odds makers got a hold of the information that Missouri would be missing three of its starters. 18 points was not enough. 47 points was not enough, because right now it's 48 to nothing. There's Eric Mitchell. Ran in that last touchdown. They tried him a tailback, they tried him a wide receiver. He was a tailback in high school, but maybe a little bit small to take the constant pounding there, and so he'll play wide receiver, I think, for the most part of his career. Well, be sure to join Dan Reeves and me each Monday evening at 6.30 for the Dan Reeves Show. This Monday, our guest will be standout Broncos linebacker Carl Mecklenburg. The coach and I will also take a preview of next week's showdown game with the Kansas City Chiefs. That's a Dan Reeves Show, Mondays at 6.30, right here on Channel 4 the home of the Broncos. And there are seats available 
at all of the Dan Reeves shows if you'd like to come into the studio and watch it live. Just give us a call. Jerome Madison and Skip Leach to receive the kickoff. Berger puts it out of bounds behind the end zone. Let's take another look at that Eric Mitchell touchdown. You can see the Missouri defense really flowing to stop the option. And right there, once Mitchell catches the football, look outside, what do you see? Same thing Eric Mitchell saw, nothing. Walks into the end zone. He was celebrating back at the five-yard line. He knew he was in. Scoring drive after the Chad Brown recovered fumble. Just two plays to go 20 yards. So Mizzou will try it again. Every time we turn around, they're first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Here's the final from Notre Dame. The Irish put a licking on pit, 42 to 7. The Panthers, a top 20 team, manhandled by Notre Dame. And right here, there's your score. A lot of time left, but not enough for Missouri to get back into it, that's for sure. Second and nine. Again, they run, and again, they fumble. And CU has the ball again. I saw four or five black jerseys fall on it. Let's see if a Mizzou Tiger was able to sneak in. No, it's CU's ball. The third time Missouri has fumbled the ball away today. Missouri came into the game with running backs nicked up a bit, and thus they really haven't been able to establish much. Beaker almost knocks the ball out, but it looked like it just came out as he was going down. And Eric Hamilton, we think, was the buff that got the recovery. Well, with such a big lead, the Buffs are going to their third string quarterback now, Cordell Stewart from Marrero, Louisiana. Now in, number 10, and Darnell Brooks is in a running back. The fake goes to Brooks, Stewart throws, but it's dropped by Sean Embry. Well, I'll tell you somebody that's going to take Sean to task for that, his brother John, who's an assistant coach, a volunteer assistant coach for the Buffs. His brother John played tight end here. 1983 to 1986 and his dad John might also have something to say about it too the elder John Embry played for the Broncos and for CU also second and ten Third and eight for the Buffs. And into the ball game now for the first time this afternoon at tight end is Christian Foria. Young man from Northridge, California. Stewart. A lot of room. He decides to run it. Almost brought down at the ten. Finally brought down at the two. Cordell Stewart almost ran that ball in from the 27-yard line. And I think the play was designed to be a pass. Oh, it certainly was, but what a difference once he decides to make the defense play him. Cordell Stewart at 6'2 and about 205 pounds, and you'll be able to see the strength of this young man breaking tackles. He runs a lot like a fullback, and yet he can throw the ball, and... He, along with Vance Joseph, the future quarterback for Colorado football. Boy, this coaching staff loves Cordell Stewart. And that's the end of the third quarter. The Buffs will begin the final frame with the ball on the Missouri two-yard line and with a first down. Let's take a break. The Buffs pitching a shutout. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan, Folsom Field, the start of the fourth quarter. It's 48 to nothing, but the Buffs are about to make it more. 
That's Tony Senna in for the touchdown. Tony Senna, the backup fullback for the Buffs. That might be his first touchdown ever in a college uniform. Well, he hasn't had much time to play. He's been a great special teams player and a good kid, too. Well, you had him on the McCartney show a couple of weeks ago. He was a pleasure. That's Blue Toe with the extra point. And it's 55 to nothing. Tony Senna, congratulations all around on the sideline. You're seeing Tony Senna's first touchdown of his career, as last mentioned. It's got to be nice. Senior, he's worked hard his entire career. He's actually, before this year, only carried the football eight times. There you see the statistics through three quarters. Colorado with 30 first downs. We'll be checking on that for school record inventory. Almost 400 yards rushing through three quarters. We've got some uh, cheerleaders going to be doing significant push-ups for the next 30 minutes or so. Chips, or Ralphie, whoever that is, just decided to do some uh, cheating-type sit-ups. Get up and do push-ups. They're going to spend a little time in the jacuzzi tonight. Get some heat on those sore muscles. One thing about Missouri fans here, they're dressed in black and gold, so as they leave the field and go home, they can at least not stick out like sore thumbs. When Nebraska and Oklahoma come in here, although the score usually not like this, you know who they are when they leave. A lot of black and gold today. A lot of people are leaving the stadium already. 55 to nothing, and we just started the fourth quarter. Speaking of firsts, Eric Mitchell scored the touchdown before Tony Senna, and that was also Eric Mitchell's first touchdown of his college career. Mitch Berger will be kicking off for the Buffs. And as we've told you about eight times previous, Jerome Madison and Skip Leach will be returning. Bit of a squimmer by Berger this time. Leach with an opportunity. Gets it up to the 22. Return of approximately 20 yards. That last scoring drive, four plays after the recovered fumble. Took just a little over a minute. And Senna took it in. Buffs with a lot of second and third stringers in on defense now. Darius Holland, Jeff Bruner, Brian Diet on the defensive line. And a new Missouri quarterback, Jeff Handy. A freshman out of Blue Springs, Missouri. There tries to hit Jerome Madison. It's incomplete. Let's go down to the field. Mark McIntosh has something for us. Mark? Thank you very much, Les. Earlier in the ballgame, you talked about Darian Hagan going over 100 yards. Well, that's the first time since the Stanford game of last year that Darian Hagan has gained more than 100 yards. You remember back in 89, he rushed for more than 1,000, but he struggled since then, but he's over 100 today. Back to you guys. Thanks, Mac. Running the ball for Missouri there was Joe Freeman, another freshman. Well, if you're wondering what's going on in the National League Championship Series in baseball, Atlanta in the fifth inning beating the Pittsburgh Pirates 6-2. to two. And here's a football score for you. Air Force, boy, sinking Navy 46-6 to six in the fourth, and that one is in Annapolis, Maryland. This is Jerome Madison. And we've got a penalty flag. Been a lot of face masks calls from the day. Think we've had five or six of them. Face mask, five yards against the defense. First down. Easy to make that call. 
when the body goes upfield and the head turns around behind, <laughs> you, know, you know that's not a normal procedure. Well, let me ask you, you played so many years. Uh, does it hurt as much as it looks like it does? It can, sure. It can really wrench your neck. It just depends on, on the individual play. But it's never fun. First down for Mizzou. Handy. Not so handy on that one. The intended receiver was Kenny Holly, but it was thrown behind him. Well, these two teams met for the first time in 1930, and they've played almost every year since, 56 times. And they're going to play the conference opener against each other the next three years also. Next year, of course, it'll be in Columbia, Missouri at Faro Field. And Missouri will remember this game when they get the Buffs at home next year. Second and ten. Handy complete. This time he has Holly. And Holly is up to the 44. It was Ryan Thomas on the tackle. Handy doesn't figure to get a lot of playing time the next couple of years unless something happens to Phil Johnson. Holly with a miss. Ryan Thomas right there out of Fort Collins Cooter High School. A couple of uh, young quarterbacks actually transferred from Missouri after they found out that Phil Johnson was going to be the man. Mizzou, not much on the ground there on first down. Well, the biggest CU route in this series, we'll tell you about that in a second. First, we'll tell you and when CU holds an opponent to less than 100 yards, the Buffs are undefeated. That only makes sense. Well, the biggest drop in this series for CU, just two years ago, 1989, the Buffs beat Mizzou 49 to three. This one will eclipse that. And the two freshmen hook up, Andy to Joe Freeman. This is one of those afternoons where Mizzou wishes it brought along its first squad but they only travel with 60. This is very reminiscent of the game we did here three weeks ago when CU did a number on Minnesota. 49 to nothing. CU sure to move up in the rankings today. They came in ranked 25th in the Associated Press Bowl. This should bring up a couple notches. Complete that time. To number 11, Kenneth Dunn, the wide receiver out of East St. Louis, Illinois. Julian Hayward, the tackle. Just a nice throw from Handy, just a seam pattern. Missouri with three wide receivers from the left side, they flood the zone. And you see Dunn with a nice catch. Big Spencer Coulter miss. And Missouri trying to get their first score of the afternoon. It throws a nice pass, doesn't it? Sure does. First and goal from the nine. Michael Washington gets it down almost to the five-yard line. Mark McIntosh, what do you have? Well, if anybody out there is wondering what the record is for most points in a ball game by the CU Buffs, it's 65 set against the Arizona Wildcats at Tucson 33 years ago, back in 1958. These guys weren't even a tweaker in anybody's eye. When that happened, that they might have a shot to break that record today. Darian Hagen so bored, he's reading a magazine. Second and goal from the five. This is Freeman again. Is he in? Yes. The side judges say yes. So Missouri finally gets on the board for the first time all day with 11.47 to go in the final quarter. I'm sure even though the Buffs are, were up by 55 points, they're not too pleased about this. When you're so close to throwing a shutout, you want it badly. Good job here just ducking behind the blockers and keeping his feet moving. Joe Freeman out of Richardson, Texas. 
gets into the end zone. It's okay to be happy. Pretty good drive. Extra point is good from Jeff Jackie. So Missouri has its first seven points of the afternoon, but they're still down by 48. Colorado with a 48-point lead, 11.47 to go in what has been a very long ball game. Charles Johnson returning the kickoff and brings it up to about the 27-yard line. Well, this is a nice way to open the conference schedule for CU. And they're going to need a little momentum because next week they play the Oklahoma Sooners at Oklahoma's place. That last scoring drive, best drive of the afternoon for Mizzou. Nine plays, 78 yards, and Joe Freeman scored the TD. Well, how do you see next week? I think it's going to be tough on them. I don't think the odds are insurmountable, and, and as you mentioned, they gain a lot of confidence by their play here this afternoon. Cordell Stewart, the freshman from Louisiana, gets it up to the 37. He might have first down yardage. And again, at 6'2 and over 200 pounds, the impressive thing about him, aside from his quickness, it breaks tackles. That straight arm just knocks somebody to the ground. Cordell Stewart, excellent arm. Good, uh, good presence for a freshman. High school All-American. He came into this game averaging nine yards a rush. He's played a little this year so far. That's Darnell Brooks out of TJ, Thomas Jefferson High School. A couple of years ago, led TJ to the state title in the 6A classification. He was playing defensive back in spring ball and early this year in the fall. But when CU had a little trouble at running back, they moved Brooks back. And I think he's a lot more comfortable there than he was at defensive back. First down, the option. And Stewart opts to keep it. And a good decision. Inside the 45, down to the Mizzou 42. Jermaine Wilkins this time. Again, not to overstate it, but watch the pace and patience Cordell Stewart has. Most young guys would pitch it right there, and yet he ducks back underneath, keeps the football, makes the right choice, and picks up a first down. He looks like he's played in the option attack on a collegiate level for at least a couple of years. He doesn't look like a freshman right out of high school. He also doesn't look like his size, 6'2", 205, the way he fluidly moves. First down. This is Brooks again, running wide. Might have a yard. Travis McDonald, the tackle. I think CU would be happy to have the clock run down very quickly here. A 55 to seven lead, you don't want to get anybody hurt going into Oklahoma. And Missouri wouldn't mind that either. They probably want to get out of here as quickly as possible. Under 10 minutes to go, fourth quarter. Inside the 35. Gang tackled, and among those making the tackle, Javon Lenhart. Bill McCartney. Ah, you can take the rest of the afternoon off, Bill. You don't have to put the headphones on. You don't have to strategize. Cordell Stewart, pretty nice afternoon. Averaging a little better than 11 yards a carry so far. Third and three for the Buffs. A lot of option today. This is Brooks. Has some room. Inside the 20, down to the 16-yard line before Jermaine Wilkins grabs him. Well, we've talked about it all afternoon. You can be in perfect position to defense the option, but you have to make the plays. 
Stewart, the option of Brooks. There's a tackle that has to be made. Jason Oliver just kind of whiffs Darnell Brooks. And that's what drives defensive coordinators mad. You get them right where they have to be, and yet with great athletic ability, the offense is able to make the play. Darnell Brooks, a communication major. Stewart fumbles the snap, makes a nice recovery, though, and gets it back to the line of scrimmage. Will Bass falls on top of him. This scene is very reminiscent of the Minnesota Gophers a few weeks ago. Bob Stull, not a very happy man. He's done a good job. You can regroup next week. They go home. They have their homecoming game against Oklahoma State. Unlike last year, after the CU game, they played Nebraska and lost 69 to 13. Second and ten. Stewart, an advisable pitch, is picked up by Missouri. Missouri will get the ball. That's Mike Jadlow, but you cannot. You cannot advance there after you pick it up. Not in college ball. In the pros, anything's game. He could have gone in for the score. Not in college ball, however. Now Cordell Stewart here ducks back inside, and when he does, his running back gets knocked down. Stewart doesn't see him, makes the pitch to the invisible man. And you can see the ball picked up. You cannot advance it because it was behind the line of scrimmage. And you can see Darnell Brooks really took one in the chops from Marcus Martin and nobody for the pitch. The quarterback for Missouri is the second string freshman, Jeff Handy. He gives it off to Jerome Madison. I think he lost the ball, but Missouri recovers it. He got hit by two buffs, including Tate Nelson, and coughed it up. But he caught it in midair and fell down. Missouri now just trying to run the ball to establish a little bit of a running game, obviously out of the contest. But you can see Jerome Madison lost the handle. Lots of black jerseys. Coaches like that. And Don Wright got the ball back for the Tigers. Second and three for the Tigers from their own 22. Another fumble. And again, Missouri is able to fall on it. What is that, five fumbles on the day for Mizzou? Boy, when it ain't going right, it ain't going right. Nebraska with a nice conference opener. Speaking of ain't going right, ain't going right. Boy, oh boy. What do you think for Oklahoma State? Well, it's two, two field goals and a safety? <laughs> yeah, they've got a young team. Wyoming ahead of Utah and Laramie, 29-14 in the second quarter. Pat Jones has got a very young team in Stillwater that's just trying to figure out how to win. Third and five. Mizzou picks up the first down yardage. The new quarterback who ran the ball is Brian Solly. Another freshman. This one out of Jackson, Tennessee. Sally with very good speed. He runs a 4-4-2-40. Hasn't had any playing time yet this year, however. He's a freshman out of Jackson, Tennessee, a pre-business major. Whistles on the field. <laughs> and the referee wants the CU Buffs to get back along the sideline. You're getting too close to the field, fellas. You've got 11 men out here. You don't need any more. Not up 55 to 7. Back up from the sideline to the Colorado team. First and ten for Mizzou. Once again, it's Jerome Madison, and he's across the 45. And he has another first down. William Polk in the ballgame now from Montbello High School made the tackle. Sophomore. 
Another Big 8 conference score, Kansas beating Kansas State 9-3 in the fourth quarter. Both those schools struggling programs the last few years, but they're both off to 3-1 and one starts. Under six minutes to go. First down, Mizzou. Sally almost brought down, escapes, and completes the pass to Kenny Holly. The man who almost brought him down for the sack was DeShannon Campbell, the fine freshman linebacker from Houston, Texas. Solly does a nice job here just avoiding the rush. It looked like he was going to be sacked by DeShannon Campbell and got away, and wide receivers get crunched when the ball hangs up like this, but Holly hangs on. I can't wait to see DeShannon Campbell when he has some experience. He's going to be a good player. Good job of hanging on to the football by Holly. Campbell is six foot six, 250 pounds, and moves like a running back. But the pass was completed, and Missouri has a first down. Once again, a good rush. Sally almost has the ball intercepted. The rush was put on by Spencer Coulter and Rodell Guest from the linebacker position. As he likes to be called house guest. Rodell left school last year. He tried a career at pro basketball with the WBL entry in Memphis, Tennessee. Didn't pan out for him, so he came back to school, registered for a few classes, and came back out for the football team. Sally going deep, nowhere near a receiver. Excuse me, that's handy back in the ballgame. Missouri playing musical quarterbacks now. Andy overthrows his receiver by a good 10 yards. It'll be third down for Mizzou. 10 yards to go in CU territory. Missouri came into this game beating Illinois, tying Indiana, beating Memphis State. We thought it would be a tougher game than this. That pass incomplete. Fourth down situation for Missouri. Looks like they're going to go for it. the CU sideline. The stadium getting awfully empty. We've got 5.03 to go in the final quarter. Andy in the shotgun. Good pressure again. Andy steps up, but no receiver in the area. Pressure once again from Rodell Guest and Spencer Coulter. Blake Anderson also in there. Blake, of course, the nephew of CU great Bobby Anderson. And the son of CU great, former CU great Dick Anderson. Dick went on to play a, have a fine career with the Miami Dolphins. We're going to take a break at Folsom Field. The Buffs lead it 55-7. Well, while we were away, CU ran one play. It was Darnell Brooks for a seven-yard gain. So it's second and three. The CU Buffs, you're not going to believe this, they have 452 yards rushing today. Just on the ground, 452 yards. This is Brooks again, another big hole. Finally brought down at the Missouri 41. Jermaine Wilkins, the tackle. He could have 500 yards rushing to the end of this game. So he's got the time to do it. 416 to go. Point to Arnell Brooks is a good player in high school. He's really been bounced back and forth between offense and defense and trying to find a spot. He has looked good here this afternoon. And, and kids really have to take advantage of any opportunity to show what they can do. 
First and ten for the Buffs. This is Cordell Stewart on the caper. Inside the 40. Down to the 37, Travis McDonald. The tackle. Three and a half minutes to go. The Buffs up 55 to 7. Well, that kid has the right idea. Game's not close. Grab a little shut eye. Maybe he can stay up a little later. Stewart again on the option. Around the right end. Inside the 30, out of bounds at the 29, and that'll be good for another CU first down. <laughs> the last time CU had more than 500 yards rushing, it was two years ago against Kansas State. They had 518 yards. It's possible they could do better than that today. First man through, bowling his way up. Is Scott Phillips from Monument, Colorado. Sophomore, six foot two, 220 pounds. He's listed as a tight end. He lined up at fullback that time. Colorado's got to be nearing some sort of school mark, you would think, for first downs. Another first down that time from Phillips. The buffs on the 17 yard line. This is Darnell Brooks, tripped up. Gain of one. Tim Burke did the tripping. Well, a lot of firsts today. Wide receiver Robbie James cut his first collegiate pass. Eric Mitchell and Tony Senna score their first collegiate touchdowns for the Buffs. A lot of ball players right now getting their first action of the year. Two minutes to go. Stewart once again gives to Phillips the first man through. And Phillips is down to the 10 yard line. A gain of six. Here are the folks that put it all together for you today, the audio and the video, bringing you the pictures and the sound. Great crew at Channel 4. A little extra curricular activity on the field. I'm sure Missouri very, very frustrated by now. Approaching the one-minute mark. The sooner the better. A few more of the folks bringing you the game. Fifty-five to seven. Forty-five seconds to go. Think the Buffs will try and take it in, Dave, or do you take it easy on Missouri here? Darnell Brooks isn't taking it easy. Down to the six-yard line. He wants that goal line. I think they'll line up, excuse me, at regular speed and just probably run a play. They won't hurry to get to the line of scrimmage, however. Clock winding down, under 30 seconds. Well, CU didn't need any fifth down this year to make its point. Not close today. In fact, CU didn't need fourth down in a lot of cases. 
Fans want the Buffs to take it in one more time, but the Buffs decide to take it easy on Missouri. Down the ball, the clock winds down. We are at zero, and this ball game is over. CU opens the conference schedule with a win. We'll be right back to wrap things up.